Good morning, students. Uh, I welcome you for our tax class, which is chapter number nine today, in which we will discuss computation of uh, tax and optimization and the process of how to compute tax. So this is our last chapter in this syllabus, and uh, this is very important because we are going to uh, study the all provisions what you have gone through till now, and that is on numerical part so it's a very important chapter it's a last chapter but according to me this chapter question will be the first question in your examination like a compulsory question so whatever you have gone through in this income tax subject from the day one till now so all those provisions which have been discussed with you numerical part separately like residential status provisions, then salary, house property, PGBP, capital gain, income from other source, TDS, advanced tax, deduction, set off, clubbing. So all these provision you will see now that it will come in a single question. And if it is happening, then how to solve these kind of question that we are going through in this chapter, that is chapter number nine. So I am C. Ankit Sharma again welcomes you all and have a very, very good morning. Namaskar, Suprabhat, Vanakkam, Kemcho, Subhaba Khair uh, and uh, Kasakai, etc, etc. I believe you all are wake up now and I also asked you, I also requested to all of you that you should have gone through the basic concept chapter 1 and the salary chapter before starting this class. So I believe that you all have gone through the provision of these two chapters because it will really going to help you to understand the provision easily of this chapter. So chapter number nine does not have much provisions, which is we are going to study the old provision. This is kind of summary of all provisions, but we are going to study something new in this chapter and that is AMT provision. AMT provision that is alternate minimum tax. With that, we will discuss the 115 BAC tax rates and the normal regime, which is shifting opt out of 115 BAC tax rate. We also have salary optimization provision in this chapter that how to structure your salary to get the maximum tax benefit. That's a new topic which has been inserted from this year only. So before starting the class, okay, let's take the good morning wishes from Mr. Mohammed Suhail. Kokanati, Balamurli Krishna, good morning. Madha, good morning. Divya, good morning. Uh, Divya is saying, good morning, sir, with 5 degrees centigrade from HR. Haryana, it's over also 6 degrees. It's too, too chilling over here, of course. But ah, we can't do it. So, Mr. Pathrana, good morning. Devraj, good morning. Prashant, good morning. Hemlata, Ajay Chauhan, Sankaran, Shreyas, Lokesh, Hardik. Uh, Kadambri Bhatt, Manohar Yadav, Parsit Rastri, Good Morning, Thikshan, Khungla, Mittal, Ram Jha, Sushil, Komal, Rani, Rasmita, Arvind Chobe, Gopi, Retro Benerji, Pooja, Suhas Govda, and Subhas Ben, Khalsi, Girish, Harsh, everybody. Have a very, very good morning to all of you. So, Let's get started the provision and as usual before starting the class, let's share the thought for the day. And it says, plan out your work and work out your plan. So very simple quotations, but you can see very impactful also. So it says plan out your work. So planning is very important. In my opinion, to start anything. Planning and preparations. These two things are very, very important before you start working. So before starting your working, your hard work, the first step is to plan and preparations. After that, the working part start, the operational part start. So this is planning and preparation is very important. So it says plan out your work. You have to plan out your work at how you are going to complete your work and then work out your plan. And then you should start processing or working the operation part to fulfill your plan, your goal. What is for your 
purpose it is going to be a ca so plan out your study and then start studying to complete your that plan so very interesting saying very interesting quote for the day so now let's get started with the provision part so this is our chapter number 9 and it says we are going to discuss income tax liability computation and optimization so technically if you see in this chapter what we are going to discuss we have to see how to calculate the gti the gross total income then we have to deduct deductions under section 80c to 80u then we will find our total income that is total income after deduction then we have to calculate tax as per normal provision of income tax or tax as per 115 bac that is default tax regime is 115 bac <coughs> and tax as per normal provisions are if you shifting out of that default tax regime that is our normal provision and one more tax is amt tax so there is a lot of thing for calculating your final tax liability so when there was no section 15 bac at that point of time we just need to calculate tax as per normal provision and at some point of time amt was also not there so there is only one kind of calculation that is tax as per normal provision but after some time amt has been introduced what is amt why is amt how we need to calculate amt etc that we will discuss later do not worry we will discuss each and everything and then now section 15 bac has been insert again so this calculation of tax structure somehow become very complex because if a person needs to calculate his tax so technically he is going to calculate tax thrice as per normal provision as per 15 bac and as per amt tax if amt provisions are applicable so you can see it's a mess till now but do not worry i am here i am going to tell you each and everything in detail and then you will understand that how we should calculate the tax of a person so let's get started <clears throat> and the best part of this chapter is mostly provisions like 60 to 70% provisions we have already studied so they are just going to give you a recap of the provision what you have gone through in this subject income tax so there is nothing new is going to be there except the amt 115 bac and salary structure case except these three topics everything has been already discussed earlier like in capital gain chapter if you have remember in capital gain chapter we discussed in the last check uh, last lecture that how to calculate the tax at that point of time i have told you that there is five kinds of income for the purpose of tax structure that you have to calculate your gti and then for the purpose of taxation that has to be divided into five parts one is casual income then long term capital gain under section 112a then short term capital gain under section 111a then long term capital gain under section 112 and then the other incomes so almost the same structure is going to be follow the new things that we should understand how to compare that tax to 115 bac tax and amt tax so there is almost 60 to 70 percent provisions are already those provision which we have gone through already and you can see that what is the chapter overview we can see that is computation of total income okay determination of residential status we already know what is the meaning of residential status that is chapter number 2 classification of income under five heads which i have discussed with you all the five heads that salary house property profit and gains of business and professions capital gain and income from other source <clears throat> nothing new then computation of income under each head applying the charging and deeming provision and providing for permissible deduction exemption there under so these each head having separate kind of deductions also the individual deductions of these chapter 
like under salary there are certain exemption like hra house rent allowance children education allowance standard deduction of 50000 rupees okay in the same way income from house property having deduction regarding interest ppi interest current year interest then section deduction of 30% of your annual value also profit and gains and business of profession have a multiple deduction etc section 35 section 35 ad section 10 double a etc capital gain having exemptions section 54 54 b d e c f income from other source having individual deductions regarding the expenses we have incurred regarding that so after the calculation of these five heads income then we need to apply the clubbing provision the clubbing provision okay you must have discussed with the other faculties or you, we can say that other faculties have discussed this with you then the set off and carry forward provisions of losses as per the provision of the act then this total after applying the clubbing and set off this will call computed gross total income after that gross total income we will deduct deductions under from the gross total income the reduction from section 80c to 80u and then we will have our total income or we can say taxable income or we can say that is income chargeable to tax okay <clears throat> so meaning of total income means the gross total income after deduction has been reduced from the gross total income whatever we have that is going to be called the total income income to be considered while computing total income of individual it says in his personal capacity under five heads of income so those income will be considered for a personal individual category person if whatever he is earning from these five heads of income will be his gti as a partner of a firm or llp so they will they can have their individual income from salary head business head house property pgbp or other source but they will also receive something from the firm or llp also that is salary bonus etc taxable portion and interest on capital or loan from also from the firm or llp that we have discussed in pgbp provision also so we are not going to repeat this provision the profit part of the firm is exempt under section 10 to a that we have also gone through in pgbp provision in the partnership firm topic okay so generally a partner receives salary bonus remuneration or interest on capital or loan and share of profit from the firm so out of these three profit is exempted salary and interest portion is going to be taxable that part which was allowed in computing the income of the partnership firm so we have discussed all these provision in detail in pgbp already okay then as a member of huf then income of other person included in the income of the individual that is clubbing provision you have also gone through this provision also so after that we will arrive at our gross total income computation of total income and tax payable by an individual so how to compute the income and tax for that purpose we have to follow step 1 to step number 8 and these step number 1 till step number 8 is already we have discussed in the chapters we have already gone through so you can see the chef step number 1 is determination of residential status so in chapter number 2 you must have gone through the provision of residential status in which the person can be a resident and ordinary resident either or a resident or not ordinary resident or a non resident so these are the three classification out of which a individual or person can be one of it in every previous year the status can be changed also in every previous year so either you will be a resident or ordinary resident or resident not ordinary resident or non resident so the first step before calculating anyone's income or taxability 
is this that you have to find his or her residential status in India in that particular previous year. Okay. So these are the provision, the summary of provision that has been discussed with you in chapter number two. That is step number one. Then what kind of income is going to be taxable in case of resident or non-resident that has also been discussed in chapter number two. That if you are a resident and ordinary resident, then every income is going to be taxable in India, whether you earn received in India or outside India. If you are a resident but not ordinary resident, then income which is earned and received in India is taxable or which is controlled from India is going to be taxable, etc. So these provisions also have been discussed in section 5, that is incidence of tax in chapter number 2. Okay. Then different classes of head, different head of income and computation of that particular income under that particular head. So we have five heads of income, salary, house property, profit and gain of PGBP, capital gain and other sources. So how to calculate these income under their individual head? That is going to be discussed already. Then computation of income under each head after giving the respective exemption, deduction, etc. Like if agriculture income that is going to be exempted under both regime. If certain exemption that is not available under default tax regime like house rent allowance, children education allowance, etc. So these are certain deductions when you opt for shifting opt out of section 15 BAC then you can avail it. But if you are under section 15 BAC, you cannot claim certain kind of exemption under respective head. Whether it's salary, whether it's house property, etc. That we have already discussed in the respective head. That if you are under a default tax regime, what kind of deduction exemption you can claim in salary? Under house property, under PGBP, etc. So this is a summary of these provisions. Next is... <clears throat> Like section 35 AD deduction is not available if you are under default tax regime. So if you want to claim section 35 AD benefit, deduction benefit, then you have to opt out of that. Only in that situation you can claim that benefit. Even in case, same case of scientific research also, the provision is same. So we have gone through in the PGBP case. Clubbing of income of a spouse, minor child, etc. The other faculty has discussed this provision with you also. So that is clubbing concept. Then set off and carry forward and set off of losses. That is already discussed with you, of course. Step number five, we have to do this. Intra head set off and inter head set off. Intra head set off when you set off your losses from the same head. That is called intra head set off. And if you have having some loss which is not set off, under intra head provision, then you can carry forward that set losses to the other head to set off in the same previous year. That is called inter head set off. That must have gone through the provision in the set off chapter. If those losses cannot be set off in the previous year, then you can carry forward losses into subsequent year also. As per the provision, those have been mentioned. Like some losses can be carried forward for eight years. Some losses can be carried forward for four years. And some losses can be carried forward for infinite time. So these provisions for of carry forward and setup of losses has been discussed in that chapter. So we are not discussing anything new till now. I am just going to give you a recap that for calculation of tax, what step we have to complete it before reaching to the total income. Then computation of total income, gross total income. So whatever heads you have actually calculate the income under different head. And after applying the clubbing and set of provision on those head, we will arrive at our gross total income. Now we have to direct the deductions available out of this gross total income to arrive at the total income that is taxable income or income chargeable to tax. Some deductions are available under default tax regime and some deductions are available under shifting opt-out default tax regime. 
So that has also been discussed with you in the reduction chapter by the other faculties. <clears throat> other reduction, etc. So this has been also discussed with you. Section 10 AA, Special Economic Zone Deduction. Then 80 RRB, 80 TTB, 80 TTA, 80 CCD2, etc. Then computation of total income. So how we will find out our total income? That is whatever is gross income. If out of that gross total income, we deduct the chapter 6 deduction and section 10 AA, that is a special economic zone, then you will find out our total income. And it should be rounded off to the nearest multiple of 10. So this is an important point in the examination. For the purpose of examination, you should follow this provision that you have to round it off the uh, total income into the nearest multiple of 10. So you can see that till now we did not discuss anything new. We are, we are just recapping the provision what already has been gone through with you. Okay. Now tax is going to be calculated on the total income of the assessee. Clear? <clears throat> so these step eight steps should be followed before calculating the tax. After complete the step number eight, now the calculation of tax will start. So application of the rate of tax on the total income in case of an individual. So we have two provision. One is section 115 BAC. That is default tax regime right now earlier it was new tax regime but now the section 115 bac says it's a default tax regime that means this is the main tax regime we have to follow and if you want to claim the old provisions then you have to shift opt out of section 115 bac okay what are the structure of rates under section 115 bac for individual <clears throat> There is a slab rate or in the basic exemption limit. At present, the basic exemption limit is 3 lakh rupees under the default tax regime. The rates of tax and level of total income are as under. Like under the old tax regime, there is basic exemption limit of 2.5 lakh, 3 lakh and 5 lakh. That depends upon the person. If you are a senior citizen, then it will be 3 lakh. If you are a super senior citizen, then it will be 5 lakh. In any other case of an individual HUF, AOP, BOI, AJP, it will remain 2.5. But under default tax regime, that is section 115 BAC, the basic exemption limit for everyone is 3 lakh rupees. For individual, the basic exemption limit is 3 lakh. It does not matter you are a senior citizen or you are not a senior citizen. Clear? So, for individual, there is a slab rate and basic exemption limit. At present, the basic exemption limit is 3 lakh under the default tax regime. That must have been discussed with you in chapter number 1 also. So I have asked you that please go through the chapter 1 provisions. So it will be really easy for all of you to understand the provisions of rate of tax, etc. easily. So up to 3 lakh rupees, the rate is nil. There is no tax. <clears throat> From 3 lakh to 6 lakh, the rate is 5%. Then from 6 lakh to 9 lakh, it's 10%. 9 to 12 is 15. 12 to 15 is 20. And if you have total income exceeding 15 lakh rupees, then the tax rate will be 30%. Is it clear? Okay. Miss N. Mary Lane Sobin is saying, sir, today is chapter 8, right? No, it's chapter 9. Okay. Ikta, good morning. Nivakar, good morning. <sighs> Gunjan is saying, good morning, sir. There is also so fog in Jharkhand. Yeah, I guess it is. Mamta is good morning. Chapter 8, okay. N. Mary Lane Sober is asking, sir, what about chapter 8? So, Miss N. Mary Lane Sobin, you have to wake up first. Good morning to you. The chapter 8 has been already discussed day before yesterday. That was on 23rd of January. There was a class of chapter number 8 what we have already completed. I have already give class on chapter 8. So this is chapter number 9. So if you want to see the chapter 8 provision, then 23rd January, we have discussed the provision. Okay. Next is Tanu. Good morning. Good morning. 
Mr. Rahul Jain is asking, sir, if partner receive bonus from partnership firm, will it be included in remuneration? Again, I am saying that the detailed provision of partnership firm taxability in the heads of partner, etc., that have been discussed in PGBP chapter. And I have told you, it's salary, bonus, commission, remuneration, etc. Same thing in case of partnership firm, if it gives to the partner. Yes, that's a part of the remuneration, whether it's salary, bonus, commission, fees, remuneration by whatever name called. Okay. So the slab rate under default tax regime is 3, 6, 9, 12, 15 and more than 15. Now the tax rate is structure under the regular provision of that. That is optional tax regime. That is we can say old tax regime right now. So it have separate taxabilities that up to 2,50,000 for below 60 year, that is nil, up to 3 lakh, nil tax rate if you are a senior citizen from 60 year till 80 year and if you are a more than 80 year and resident in India that we call super senior citizen, the exemption is 5 lakh. Then the balance income up to 5 lakh will be taxable at the rate of 5%. Then from 5 lakh to 10 lakh, the rate will be 20% and above 10 lakh, it will be 30%. Thick. The rate of tax have to be applied on the total income to compute the tax liability, of course. There are certain income on which slab rates are not applicable. There are certain income on which slab rates are not applicable. So any one of you can tell me some example of those income on which slab rates are not applicable. That means those income are going to be taxable with their specified rate of tax or we can call that a special rate of tax. So anyone can tell that some example of those income, those are going to be taxable with a special rate of tax, not as per slab rate, whether it's a, a optional scheme or if it's a default tax regime. So I'm waiting. Give me one or two example of those income. Those are going to be taxable at a special rate, not with slab rate. <clears throat> Ms. Pooja is asking, sir, if there is not mentioned in exam, which regime we have to follow for calculation of tax? Pooja, it will be mentioned in the question that what regime you should follow. But if not mentioned that I prefer, in my opinion, that will be default tax regime because the name is default tax regime. So that will be the case or you can send a mail to the institute or the BOS for the clarification also. Ruturaj is saying section 112A, very good. And uh, section 112A uh, talks about the long-term capital gain on equity-oriented funds or equity shares and the rate is 10%. Well done, Ruturaj. Rahul Jain, special rate of income on casual income. Very good. Yes, 30% is the rate on casual income. So that is a special rate of income and the slab rate does not applicable on it. Well done. Uh, Vinash Kansar saying long term capital gain. Yes, long term capital gain may need to be taxable at the 10% rate or 20% rate. Okay. Dividend income. No. Hardik Sammarbhai Gareja in the last Assessment year, I guess 23, 24. Dividend have separate rate of tax, but from this year, dividend is going to be included in slab rate of taxes. So that's not a correct answer. Shri Nivasan saying long term and short term. <clears throat> yes, long term having the separate rate, but short term capital gain under section 111A only having a special rate of income. If you have any other short term capital gain except section 111A, then it's going to be taxable as per slab rate. Okay, 111A having rate, that is 15%. Zahid is saying capital gain. Please do not use these kind of words, please. Okay, because it's not capital gain. Short term capital gain other than 111A having the slab rate. So you have to be specific with your answer. If you will write the that a special rate is taxable on capital gain, so that will be a wrong answer. Because in that capital gain, there is a gain that is short term capital gain other than one man money that is going to be taxable as per slab rate. So your answer will be incorrect. So please be specific when you answer 
because we are doing a professional course. CA is a professional course. So you have to be, what is the meaning of word professional? I have discussed, might be with you. That means we have to be expert in this syllabus, expert in this knowledge. And an expert cannot give the general answer. An expert give the exclusive answer, a special answer, detail answer. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Uh, and Mary Lynn Sobin is saying interest. No, this is wrong answer. Shreyas is saying section 112A, 112111A and casual. This is kind of answer what I was talking. This is called the specific answer. When you are writing the income or the specific section. Well done Shreyas. Avinash, dividend is wrong. Lavanya, casual income. Yes, section 112A, section 111A. Correct. Uh, capital gain of section 112A, Manohar and 111. Not is 111, it is 111A. Harshit, lottery, good. Sankaran, lottery, casual income. Well done, well done. So you are not sleeping all. You are giving the answer. Well done. I5 from Wi Fi. Capital gain, dividend, winning from lottery. Oh, wow, good. Clear. So those kind of income which having special character is going to be taxable with a specific rate and the slab rates are not going to applicable on that. You can see about these income already mentioned over here. So for instance, the rate of tax for long term capital gains on certain asset, long term capital gains on other asset, certain short term capital gain, winning from lottery, crossword puzzles, race, and winning from online games, etc. So section 112A, 112, 111A, 115BB and 115BBJ. They having a specific rate that is 10%, 20%, 15%, 30% and 30% respectively. In the above case, under section 112A, we all know that long term capital gain up to 1 lakh is exempted. And balance is going to be taxable at 10% rate. So you can see in this chapter, even till now, we are not doing anything new. We are just going to recap the old provision. So why it's happening? Because when we start solving a question, which will comprise all these provision. So it will be good that if we revise the old provision, then we will able to understand why this rate is going to be applicable. Why we are deducting the deductions why we are taking the benefit of advanced tax, why we are deducting TDS, etc. Okay. So again, these all points are already discussed. Now the surcharge part is here. Section 87A. So old tax regime or new tax regime. So old tax regime is our optional tax regime and new tax regime is our default tax regime. Okay. So what are the surcharge provision in these tax regime? So let me tell you, Surcharge provisions are quite complicated because a multiple kind of surcharge is applicable. But there's only one difference under section 115 BAC surcharge provision and normal tax provision or we can say optional tax provision. Under section 115 BAC, the surcharge applicability is exactly same as per normal provision. There's only one difference that under normal provision, there is a surcharge rate of 37% is also applicable if your income exceed more than 5 crore in certain situation. But there is no concept of this 37% in case of 115 BAC. In normal provision, if your income in certain condition exceeding 2 crore and up to 5 crore, then surcharge is 25%. And if it exceeding 5 crore, then it is 37%. Under 1.5 BAC, if it is exceeding 2 crore, then it will remain 25%. Whether it exceed 5 crore or not. So that 5 crore 37% provisions are is not there in section 1.5 BAC. So here is the provisions. And I have made the diagram also for it. Let me share that diagram with you. Just a second.
So now you can see the diagram. This is the surcharge provision diagram I have prepared for you. And this is first part is saying new surcharge provisions for individual HUF, AOP, BUI, AJP opting out of default tax regime. <clears throat> that means we are talking about the optional tax regime other than 115 BAC tax regime. So in case you are out of this 115 BAC tax regime, I believe that you must have gone through the provision of surcharge also in chapter 1. I'm just going to revise it in just one or two or three minutes. Okay. So there is case one which says if total income does not consist <clears throat> long term capital gain under section 112A. <clears throat> short term capital gain under section 111A or dividend. So if your total income does not consist these three income then surcharge will be as follows. It's a normal provision. Up to 50 lakh, there is no surcharge. Okay. So from 50 lakh, more than 50 lakh, up to 1 crore. That is 10% surcharge on tax. If income is more than 1 crore, then up to 2 crore. The surcharge will be 15%. If it's more than 2 crore, up to 5 crore, it will be 25%. And if more than 5 crore, then it will be 37%. We are talking about if you are opting out of mm -hmm. section 115 BAC. Case number two, it says if your total income consists these special rate of income, any of them or all of them, long term capital gain, short term capital gain 111A or dividend. So if your total income consists any of these special rate of income, okay, or all of these, then the surcharge provision will change like this. Point A says if total income including these income is up to only 2 crore. If your total income including these income is up to 2 crore. That means it's more than 50 lakh because till 50 lakh there is no surcharge. So if it is more than 50 lakh but up to 2 crore then how surcharge will be applicable? It says if total income more than 50 lakh and up to 1 crore then surcharge will be 10% on tax. And if total income exceeding 1 crore up to 2 crore, then surcharge will be 15% of tax. So there is nothing new. It's like same is case number 1. More than 50 up to 1 CR, 10%. More than 1 CR up to 2 CR, it's 15%. If your income include these income. So there will be no change if it is up to 2 crore rupees. Clear? Now if total income without considering understand this word if your total income without considering that means excluding 112a 111a and dividend is more than 2 crore or up to 5 crore so if it is like this that your income without considering 112a or 111a Dividend is more than 2 crore or more than 5 crore. More than 2 crore or more than 5 crore. Without including these income. That means without including section 112A, 11A and dividend. If your other incomes are suppose more than 2 crore or more than 5 crore, then surcharge will be like this. It says on 112A, special rate of income tax surcharge rate will always 15%. So if your other income is 6 crore rupees and your 112A, 11A dividend income, this income is like 3 crore rupees. Then surcharge on this 3 crore rupees will be 15% and on that 6 crore rupees surcharge will be decided as per this provision. On other income, if it is more than 2 crore up to 5 crore, then 25% of tax will be your surcharge and if other income is more than 5 crore rupees, then that is 37% of tax. Last case is if total income including these income. You can see first point was saying if total income including these income is up to 2 crore. Now the C part is opposite of A. Now it says if total income including 112A dividend is more than 2 crore. So if after inclusion these income after including these income your total income is up to 2 crore 
then case A will be applicable. If after including these income, your total income is exceeding 2 crore or 5 crore, then C case will be applicable. And if your income is ex including, uh, sorry, if your income is exceeding 2 crore or 5 crore without including these income, then case B is applicable. So all these three cases are mutually exclusive. That means if A is applicable, then B and C cannot be applicable. If B is applicable, then A and C cannot be applicable. If C is applicable, then A and B cannot be applicable. Okay. So if after including is up to 2 crore, then A applicable. If after including exceeding 2 crore, then C applicable. And if without including special rate of income exceeding 2 crore or 5 crore, then B is applicable. So if it is including special income, if it exceed more than 2 crore or 5 crore, then surcharge rate will be 15% on all, all income, whether it's special rate income or normal. So this is the solution of also, there is some example, there are seven example I have framed for you. You can see in which situation, which rate of surcharge will be applicable. So that is, if you are not opting for section 115 BAC, if you are opting for section 115 BAC, then this 37% part will be gone. There will be only this case that income if including more than 2 crore, the 5 crore part is irrelevant. So if it is exceeding 2 crore, the rate will be 25%. Whether it's more than 2 crore, 3 crore, 10 crore. But if it exceeds 2 crore, then this 37% part is irrelevant. Maximum surcharge rate can be only 25%. I have made the diagram for this purpose also over here. You can see this is default tax regime. And if you'll compare it, you will see that in this case, only this 25% is your last rate. There is no 37 concept like mentioned in this note also. So you can go through it. I have uploaded the notes. The chart diagram I will upload today. The notes I have been already uploaded. Okay. So this is the provision by which you can understand the surcharge concept. So you need not to uh, read this table, etc. because it's quite confusing to understand when to apply what kind of surcharge rate. Kindly go through the chart presentation. You will be able to understand when to apply what surcharge rate. So these all are surcharge provision. Marginal leave would also be available under both tax regime. The marginal leave concept, I believe, also have been discussed with you in basic concept chapter number one. Okay. So anyone can tell me what is the meaning of marginally? What is the meaning of marginally in short? Or just tell me when marginal relief is applicable. You can tell me what is the meaning of marginal relief in short in the one line. Or you can tell me when marginal relief is applicable. Let me see who revised the chapter number one as I've asked you. Ruturaj is asking, sir, you had told us to divide income in five parts. Yes. Rama is saying section 115 BBE unexplained income is 60 percent. That is black money. So that is not normal rate, normal income of the current previous year. That is an income which has not been explained and related to some other preceding previous year. So that is normal, not, not normal rate of tax. That's a special rate of tax in case of black money. Okay. Miss Tanu is saying, sir, ek bar Hindi mein bhi bata dijiye. Uh, Tanu, kya batana hai Hindi mein? Please tell me surcharge provision. You are asking or what? Please send me a query. What you want to listen in Hindi? Surcharge provision or anything else? Okay, Vinash is telling me what is the meaning of margin relief. That means should split the income in two parts for surcharge and then add them. I don't know what you are uh, saying, Avinash. Increase in income is more than tax. Okay. This is not marginal relief. Increase in tax more than income. It must be. Okay. Okay. Sweetie is saying where increase in tax exceed increase in income. Well done. Very good. Prashant is saying when income above 7 lakh, then marginal relief can be provided. So oh, this is not the exact answer, but I'm expecting. Marginal leave is nothing, Swati is saying, but relief provided to the person uh, whose income is just more than slab prescribed under claiming rebate. Uh, we can say that, but it's not 
what I was expecting. Okay, Hardik is saying when tax is more than increase in income, then marginal relief applicable. So when the difference is tax is more than the difference of income, that is a situation in which marginal relief can be applicable, of course. So most of you are giving the correct answer. Okay, Rutraj is saying when tax is more than increase in income, yes, you are right. Marginal relief is applicable when the tax increase more than income, yes, you can say that. Srinivasan, if your total income exclude the basic limit by 1 lakh, we need to apply what you are asking. No. Next is <clears throat> Aman is saying, Jab amari thodi si income increase hone par rate zyada bad jaye, jab mal relief lagta hai, nahi Aman. Jab hamari income jo badi hai, usse zyada tax bad jaye. The difference of income, so we can say the difference of tax, if in, in, exceed, the difference of income that can be a situation in which marginal relief will be applicable. Okay. Okay. The amount of tax increase in total income beyond prescribed limit should not exceed the amount of increase in total income is marginal relief, Mr. Rama. Okay. So if an increase in income is less than the increase in tax, Harshit is saying if an increase in income is less than the increase in tax, yes, you say that. Due to increase of some extra income and more tax payable, then marginal relief option give to the SSC. Okay. Sir, if a person received money from maturity of FD, then which was earlier allowed as deduction to section 80C, then the amount received on maturity is fully taxable or only interest is taxable. Okay. Mr. Prince, in case of FD, whatever interest is accrue on FD is going to be taxable every year. Suppose if you uh, make a FD of 1 lakh rupees, okay, and 8,000 rupees is the interest in the first year, then this 8,000 accrue interest is going to be taxable in that first year. And again, your total value of FD is 1 lakh 8,000. In the next year, you get 9,000 rupees as accrued interest. So 9,000 is going to be taxable in the next assessment year. So all these interest is going to be taxable or would be taxable in the respective year in which it is going to be accrued. And when you will actually receive the amount, including interest at a time of maturity, suppose after three or four years. So we have already taxable the interest every year, what we are having accrued interest on that FD. So the full amount is not going to be taxable because you have already taxed the interest portion. Yes. If someone is not taxed that interest portion every year, then the interest part is going to be taxable. But that is not a correct uh, method. You have to taxable it every year. That's accrued part. Okay. Marginally, Neha Sharma is saying, because increase in tax is more than increase in income. Yes. Okay. Hmm, Pooja, you, you're also right. The difference between the tax payable and the tax exemption. Okay, okay. A lot of answers have been there and I am really happy that you are all not sleeping. You are awake and you are ready for your goal. Very well done. I guess the voice breaking problem will be sorted now. Yes. Okay. So now income tax rebate under section 87A for assessment year 24-25 and financial year 23-24. So we have rebate provisions also. Like we have surcharge provision uh, slightly different for 1-5 BAC and normal. In the same way, we have some rebate provisions also under section 87A. We have rebate of 12,500 rupees maximum in the old tax regime or we can say Shifting opt out section 15 BAC tax regime. And in case of uh, section 15 BAC, we have a tax rebate of 25,000 maximum that we can claim. So let's see the rebate provision. Rebate under section 87A. Section 87A provides a rebate from the tax payable 
by NSSE being an individual resident in India. So for section 15 BAC, there are two rebate provision is applicable if total income of such individual does not exceed 7 lakh. The rebate shall be equal to the amount of income tax payable on his total income for any assessment year or an amount of 25,000, whichever is less. So in case of 115 BAC, the maximum rebate will be 25,000 or your tax, whichever is low. But the second point has been inserted from assessment year 24-25. It says if total income of such individual exceeds 7 lakh, even then you can claim the rebate even if income exceeding 7 lakh. So you might be uh, only read the provision that up to 7 lakh there is a rebate. But in case of section 15 BAC, there is a rebate also can be available even if your total income exceeds 7 lakh. It's kind of marginally if you'll see. If total income of such individual exceeds 7 lakh and income tax payable on such total income exceed the amount by which the total income is in excess of 7 lakh the rebate would be as follows. So you can see it is exactly like the marginally. It says if your total income exceeds 7 lakh, but the tax amount increased by the rebate amount, then you can claim a certain rebate. So your tax cannot be exceed the rebate value. How it will be calculated? Step one, you have to calculate your total income. That will be given in question. That total income then deduct 7 lakh rupees out of that total income. Suppose your total income has been given in question 7 lakh 20,000. So 720 will be your total income. You need to deduct 7 lakh out of it. So that will be 20,000 will come in step number one. Compute income tax payable on total income. So your income has been given 7 lakh 20,000. You need to calculate your tax on 7 lakh 20,000. Then step three says, if B more than A, then you can claim the rebate and the rebate would be B minus A. So if maybe you are thinking this is complicated. So let me help you in this. This is the seven solved questions to make you understand what will be the point number two of rebate was saying. So it says, suppose an example one, your total income is seven. Clear? Now tax on total income before rebate is 25,000. This is my point number B above. Clear? This is B point. As per point number B over here. So now point A was saying you had to calculate total income minus 7 lakh. Step 1 is 7. So because the total income is 7 lakh and the 7 lakh need to deduct. So this will be 0. Axis of tax over income. Is there any excess of tax over income? So the question says yes, 25,000. That means 2 minus 3. Step number 2 minus 3, you will get step number 4. Then the rebate will be as per point number 4. So whatever will be your point number 4, that is going to be claimed, can be claimed as a rebate. And point number 6 says that point number 2 minus point number 5. That will be my tax. So up to 7 lakh. There is 25,000 rupees tax value and the rebate is also 25,000. So there will be no tax liability. So now you will understand from example number two, the second point will be applicable from example number two. Now, TI if given in question is 7,5,000. On the 7,5,000, the tax will be 25,500. Clear? Step one, total income point number one is 7,5,000. The tax that will come 25,500. Now, point number three says, let's deduct point one minus seven lakh. So if I will deduct seven lakh five thousand minus seven lakh, that will come five thousand. So this column number three, this point number three needs the excess income over seven lakh. So in this question, excess income is five thousand. Now step four says, Point number 2 minus point number 3. So point 2 was 25,500. You have to deduct the point number 3. That is 5,000. So this can be claimed as rebate. So even income is more than 7 lakh. Even then we can claim rebate. 
this will be become my rebate in point number 5. So what will be the tax? That means total tax minus rebate, that will be my tax liability. So it's kind of marginally, you can see that. Because in this question, your income is only increased by 5,000. And your tax is increased by 25,500. This is the same concept in marginally. Income exceed only 5,000. Till 7 lakh, there was no tax. But only 5,000 income increase. So now my tax is 25,500. So that is not justified. The tax can be maximum 5,000. So whatever is excess tax, that will be allowed as rebate. That is 20,500. Question number three. If your income is 7,10,000, now tax will be 26,000. Clear? How much is excess of 7 lakh? That is 10,000. So my income increased by only 10,000. And my tax has been increased by 26,000. So that is not justified. My income increased by 10,000. And my tax increased by 26,000. So 16,000 is the excess, which is over my tax value, over my income. That tax will become as a rebate for me. So I will deduct that tax from rebate. So that will remain only 10,000. So technically we are saying the tax liability will be maximum as the income increase. But it will be applicable only up to that level. Till that tax increment is higher than your income. Like in third case, fourth case. Now the income increased at 20,000 only. 720. Income increased by 20,000. But tax increased by 27,000. Let me change. Yes. So. Why is this string breaking? No. Yes, sir. हाँ मैंने वो दूसरा लगा दिया चेंज कर दिया ये से एक सेकंड में ठीक हो जाएगा इसे तो क्या ना हाँ वो मैंने दूसरा वाईफाई कर दिया कनेक्ट So uh, that question number three, we have discussed the question four, we have discussed. Now moving on to question number five. It says, like, suppose the income is 7,25,000. Now the tax rebate, tax before rebate is 27,500. 25,000 is the excess of income. And my tax increase by 27,500. So in this case, 2,500 rupees rebate can be claimed and the tax will be 25,000. Manish, what is the technical technical error? Screen blink or whatever. Yes, इंटरनेट से वैसे भी फर्क पड़ता है क्या?
इंटरनेट का इशू तो कैमरे का नहीं होना चाहिए जस्ट अ सेकेंड बस वो एक्सटेंड वाला है लॉजी टेक का है तो शुड आई रीन सर्ट वंस अभी ठीक हुआ ओके सो स्टूडेंट्स देर वॉज सम आई गेस नेटवर्क इश्यू आई गेस वी ऑल आर बैक नाउ सो वी वर डिस्कसिंग द प्रोविजन ऑफ रिबेट इन केस ऑफ सेक्शन वन वन फाइव बी ए सी सो आई गेस वी हैव डिस्कस टिल पॉइंट नंबर फोर द पॉइंट नंबर फोर दैट वॉज सेवन लैख ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड Now the income will be seven lakh twenty five thousand. If the income is seven lakh twenty five thousand, then you can see the tax will be twenty seven thousand five hundred. So please tell me till uh, which question number we have discussed the before the voice was lagging or the video was interrupted. So till what uh, which serial number of question you have discussed? The seven lakh twenty thousand case was clear. We have discussed point number one, two, three, four, and five. so is there any problem in question number 5 till now so we have discussed is question number 4 or 5 now suppose the income is 727780 suppose the income is 727780 now the tax before rebate will be 27780 clear now excess of income over tax is 27780 so from this point number 6 from 727780 you can see now there is no rebate will be applicable because the excess of income the excess of income is now not below the excess of tax so there will be no rebate applicable and tax liability will be no so you have to go through these example from point number 1 to example number 7 to understand the concept of rebate which has been introduced from assessment year 24 25 okay this is the new concept you might not have been gone through in basic chapter number 1 the other normal case that is where you are up out of the default tax regime that means when we are talking about the optional tax regime the rebate is 12500 rupees it's a normal provision you have already gone through then education says health education says etc that is 4% in all cases
So these are the provision technically till now we just only read the new provision that that was regarding the rebate. Everything else has been already discussed in separate chapters. You have gone through with earlier faculties or with me. Now the new concept is AMT. Now AMT is very interesting. First of all, before understanding the process to calculate the AMT, first we should understand why we need to calculate the AMT and what is the exactly need of AMT in our country. Let's discuss with an example. AMT is alternate minimum tax. Okay. That is alternate minimum tax. So this has been derived from another concept which was MAT, which is MAT. MAT is minimum alternate tax. So this concept has not been introduced uh, separately. It has been taken from the concept of minimum alternate tax. So minimum alternate tax is a concept which is applicable on companies only. That will be discussed in final level. A mat is not in your intermediate level. That is going to be discussed in final level. So there was a concept of AMT which has been derived from the concept of mat. And mat is applicable on only on companies and AMT has been applicable on other than companies. So what they thought, they thought we have a concept of mat and this kind of concept should also be applicable for other than companies. Earlier it was only applicable on companies. So they thought we should make a new concept and let's ch change the words from MAT to AMT. So they can do this also that MAT for company or MAT for other but they do know we will change the name into AMT in respect of MAT. So this is AMT. Why AMT is here? Before understanding this that why AMT is here, first of all before that we should understand the need of AMT. Why we need to introduce AMT or MAT in our country. Now suppose there is a individual that is suppose Mr. A. He is carrying a business. Fine. Now as per accounting provision, his sale is like 300 lakh, expenses related to business, expenses related to business is suppose 200 lakh, other expenses 40 lakh, so his net profit is 60 lakh from this business as per accounting provision. Out of these expenses, he was eligible to claim section 10 AA deduction. That is for special economic zone. And suppose because section 10 AA say that you can claim the deduction of 100% of profit for starting 5 years and after that 50% of profit for next five years and you can also extend this 50% profit for next five years if you fulfill certain specific condition. Fine. So we are uh, assuming that he is in this category that is 100% of profit can be exempted for five years. But now you should understand that accounting does not have this kind of benefit of section 10 double. Accounting does not give any benefit like section 10 double A to any businessman. So as per accounting, his profit is 60 lakh rupees on which he should pay tax. Clear. But now comes into the income tax scenario. When he will calculate income tax according to this income procedure, then how we need to calculate income tax profit under PGBP head that we need to take the net profit as per accounting provision, which is 60 lakh. Okay. And then there is certain allowed, disallowed income like uh, some bonus payable disallowed, some bad debt 
bad debts provision disallowed there is something which is allowed etc etc depreciation plus minus after that suppose the net is come minus 5 lakh effect the effect of the all plus minus of section from section 30 till section 43 it is suppose 5 lakh the net effect so now the profit as per income tax is 55 lakh now the problem arises the section 10 double a benefit is available under income tax section 10 double is there suppose he got the section 10 double a deduction of 55 lakh full value so technically for the purpose of income tax his income will be zero now listen carefully as per accounting his profit his real profit his practically he is having 60 lakh rupees is as net profit which earned by it so he is able to pay tax because he have earned some income 60 lakh rupees so he is able to pay tax out of the slab rate etc provision certainly we can say like 15 to 16 lakh or 17 lakh he can pay tax if the net profit is 60 lakh clear but because of this accounting provision, there can be tax. But as per income tax, due to section 10 AA deduction, which has not been available in accounting provision, the tax liability will be zero because there is no tax. So income tax was expecting a tax, but because of income tax benefit, there would not be any tax for this person. And this is not only for this year. That might be for year 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 because for 5 years he can claim the full profit as section 10 double A deduction. So income tax need to wait for 5 years that okay after 5 years whatever income he will earn we will get some tax because at least only 50% is going to be exempted. And after then again 5 years after 15 years we will get the full amount of tax. So that can be an expectation but at least for this we have to wait for 5 years initially to get any tax from this organization. Now suppose what happened in the 5th year this business shut down due to any reason due to any dispute or etc etc this business shut down. So now what will happen? In all these five years, he's earning profit, suppose 60, 70, 80, 90, and 100 lakh rupees each year as per accounting. And all these five years, income tax is not getting any tax, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. And we were expecting to have an income tax from this organization from the sixth year. But suppose in due to some reason, this business shut down. That means that businessmen earn a lot of income a lot of income around more than 400 lakhs. But there is no tax earned by income tax department due to the benefit of section 10 AA. There is a problem. One more problem. The same kind of issue will arise. It says, suppose now question regarding those business, those are specified under section 35 AD. Under PGEP, we have certain business almost 14 business like hospital, uh, hotel business, like cold storage, cold chain, pipeline business, etc. So those section 35 AD business, there is an advantage. Suppose there is a business section 35 AD regarding any hotel or cold storage or hospital, etc. on which he invests to establish that building, etc. Suppose 300 lakh rupees. For opening a hotel. So as per accounting purpose, if we will solve this question, suppose the receipt, the sale in this financial year was 500 lakh. The expenses, running expenses, that is suppose 200 lakh. The other expenses, suppose 50 lakh some advertisement etc is 100 lakh and depreciation he can claim only on this value 10 percent under accounting there is no concept of section 35 ad so he will claim 30 lakh rupees over it so technically his net profit if we'll see 
350, 380, that means 120 lakh is net profit on which he can pay tax. But when this calculation will move on to income tax provision, then how we will calculate the profit? We will take the net profit as per income tax, uh, accounting provision 120. We will add the depreciation. And we need to allow this deduction in place of depreciation because section 35 AD says that if any expenditure has been incurred, which has been uh, comes into section 35 AD provision before commencement of business, that is specified business, then the whole amount can be allowed as a deduction 100% in the year of commencement of business. So technically this full 300 can be claimed as a deduction. So now you can see the loss will be 150 lakh rupees as per income tax. That means there will be no tax in this year. So income tax will think, okay, now he cannot claim the depreciation. So in future year, he will pay tax. Suppose in next year, there is revenue of 100 lakh only out of which 150 lakh has been deducted, which was the loss which has been carry forward. Section 35 AD has been infinite time period to carry forward and set off of losses. So again, for this year, there will be no profit to pay tax. But as per accounting, he is earning 100 lakh rupees in second year also. But he is not going to pay anything because we have carry forward of losses and so on. So income tax will wait. Okay. We will collect the tax when this loss has been set off. Then after three or four years, we will start collecting tax. But again, that's the same problem. What if the business shut down? What if the business is not going to earn any income from the fourth or fifth year? So department will not get any tax again due to the benefit given by the income tax department. So to overcome this problem, to overcome this problem, department introduced this AMT concept. Income tax say, yes, we are providing you tax benefit. We are not taking back, taking back the benefit of section 10 AA or 35 AD. No, 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 we are not doing that. They are still with you. But we want the regular cash flow from your business. We do not want that you not need to pay any tax for starting four or five years and then you pay huge taxes after five years. No, we need regular inflow of revenue to run our country because only because the help of this tax our country runs so we do not need this case that you we need to wait for five years and then you will pay huge taxes because that is uncertain there might be no tax due to shutdown of business or any other problem so department makes a amt concept which says now it says like this that you need to file your income tax you need to calculate your income tax liability as per normal provision. As in the last two example, you will see the income tax liability was zero. Now you need to calculate the AMT tax liability without giving the benefit of section 10 AA or 35 AD and there are certain other deductions also. You cannot give the benefit of section 10 AA or 35 AD. So technically what is going to happen, there will be a profit which will be almost equivalent as per accounting profit. If we are taking off this benefit and this benefit for AMT calculation. So what will happen? You can see in the first example, there will be a net profit of 100 lakh. In the second example, there will be a net profit of 120 lakh. So if these reduction will be not going to be given to you under AMT tax. So you might be getting 60 lakh rupees as net income or 120 lakh rupees as income. That means almost equivalent to the accounting provision. There will be some difference, but it not will be a huge difference because as per income tax, there will be some certain expenses allowed, disallowed, but that will be not that huge. That tax will be zero. So now your income tax liability as per normal provision we have to calculate and that will come to zero suppose. Or we need to calculate 
ATI, that is ATI, a new concept has been reduced, that is ATI. You need to calculate your ATI. And that ATI need to taxable at 18.5%. That is a fixed rate. That means this is if this is ATI, then we have to pay tax. We have to calculate tax at the rate of 18.5% plus applicable surcharge and cess. And now we have to compare these taxes. Higher will be your tax liability. So higher will be your tax liability for this previous year. And for next year again, we have to calculate tax as per normal provision and AMT tax. Now a problem arises. One question should be raised in your mind. That this is wrong. This is the cheating with the SSE. Then now you are technically not providing the benefit of exemption or deduction to the SSE. Where is the benefit? Because you are taking tax from it. So, there is a concept of AMT credit also. This is income tax, okay? So, AMT and MAT concept are so fascinating that when I start reading it in my uh, examination time when I was a student, that at that time AMT was not there, MAT was there. So, at that time, I guess MAT was in 2001 and 2 I. So at that time, I was uh, literally fascinated by these provisions that what department is thinking, how smartly they are playing. So now you might say hey, this is the wrong provision because you said that I will get the benefit of section 10 AA and 35 AD. So as per normal provision, I need not to pay tax and now you are asking me tax. So if you are asking me tax, then what is the benefit of section 10 AA or 35 AD? There is no technical benefit. So the department say, relax, we have a, a concept of AMT credit also for you. And what is AMT credit? Let's discuss what is AMT credit. <clears throat> department says, okay. Department says, we will find your tax liability like this, like normal tax and AMT tax, whichever is higher, you need to pay tax. Okay, so suppose in year one, In year when your normal tax was 100 rupees and your AMT tax comes to 110. So which is my tax liability? Higher will be my tax liability. So technically my tax liability will be 110. Clear? And whatever excess I paid because my normal tax was 100 and my AMT 110. So whatever extra tax has been paid by me will be AMT credit. You might remember that in the chapter number 8, day before yesterday, when we were discussing the provision regarding 234A interest or tax amount, there was a concept of AMT credit, 15JD. And I was saying that this is AMT credit. What is AMT credit? You will come to know. So we are talking about that. That was the concept. So if you pay excess tax due to AMT, if you pay excess tax due to AMT, that will be your AMT credit. So there was normal tax was 100. You need to pay as per income tax provision and AMT tax is 110. So technically you are need to pay 110 to the income tax department. But that excess 10, whatever you have paid due to AMT over and above the normal tax provision, that will be your AMT credit. That will comes to your wallet. You can take the benefit of this AMT credit in later year. So you can understand that AMT credit is like a discount. So excess can be claimed as a AMT credit. Clear? So do we utilize any AMT credit? No, not yet. Now year two comes. Suppose in year two, our income tax, normal tax liability is 100 and AMT is 120. What will be my tax liability? Again, higher. How much I need to pay to the income tax department? 120. So can you tell me what will be the AMT credit now for this year? Okay, alternate minimum tax. You want to study, uh, you want to ask in Hindi. Okay, Mamta is saying, please explain in Hindi one more time. Alternate minimum tax. Okay. So, AMT kya hai? Hindi wale bachche dhukhna samjho. 
सो ए एम टी क्या है ऑल्टरनेट मिनिमम टैक्स नाम ही उसके बारे में बताता है मतलब नॉर्मल टैक्स का ऑल्टरनेट टैक्स एक आपसे लिया जाए कंपनीज के केस में लगता है मैट अदर देन कंपनी के केस में लगाया है गवर्नमेंट ने ए एम टी अब ए एम टी क्या कहता है ए एम टी ये कहता है कि कुछ ऐसे बिजनेस होते हैं जिनका अकाउंटिंग में तो प्रॉफिट आ रहा होता है बिकॉज उनके पास सेक्शन टेन डबल ए थर्टी फाइव एडी की जो डिडक्शन सिर्फ इनकम टैक्स देता है वो अकाउंट्स तो नहीं देता तो एज पर एग्जाम्पल वन आप देख सकते हैं कि उस बिजनेस में सिक्सटी लैख का प्रॉफिट था एज पर अकाउंटिंग प्रोफिशन बट जब इनकम टैक्स में हम उसका पीजीबीपी कैलकुलेट कर रहे तो ड्यू टू डिडक्शन सेक्शन टेन डबल ए थर्टी फाइव एडी एक्सेट्रा वो सारा प्रॉफिट उनमें कंज्यूम हो जाता है और हमारी टैक्स लाइबिलिटी लगभग जीरो हो जाती है काफी कम हो जाती है उससे नुकसान क्या होता है कि गवर्नमेंट को प्रॉपर टैक्स फ्लो उन लोगों से नहीं मिल रहा जो ह्यूज प्रॉफिट कमा रहे इनकम टैक्स का लॉजिक क्या है ज्यादा प्रॉफिट ज्यादा टैक्स कम प्रॉफिट कम टैक्स नो इनकम नो टैक्स तो टेक्निकली हो क्या रहा था कि ऐसे बिजनेस जो ह्यूज प्रॉफिट कमा रहे ह्यूज प्रॉफिट बट टेक्निकली वो टैक्स नहीं दे रहे टैक्स क्यों नहीं दे रहे बिकॉज इनकम टैक्स में एडवांटेजेस लेते हैं और टैक्स नहीं बनता है तो गवर्नमेंट को लगा कि कहीं ये बिजनेस जब फ्यूचर में जब टैक्स देने का टाइम आएगा अगर उस टाइम ये बिजनेस मान लीजिए बंद हो जाते हैं ड्यू टू एनी रीजन तो हमारा टैक्स तो कभी में मिलेगा ही जैसे सेक्शन थर्टी फाइव एडी में आप पूरे थ्री हंड्रेड लैख की डिडक्शन एक साल में क्लेम कर लेते हैं वैसे वो थ्री हंड्रेड लैख आप एज डेप्रिसिएशन दस साल में क्लेम करते टेन परसेंट एवरी ईयर एस एल मेथड से आप मान लें तो तो आप दस साल में एवरी ईयर थर्टी लैख क्लेम करते जाते तो हर साल सिर्फ तीस लाख का डेप मिलता और कुछ ना कुछ प्रॉफिट बचता टैक्स देने के लिए बट क्योंकि आपने तीन लाख पूरा एक साथ क्लेम कर लिया तो आपका सारा प्रॉफिट खत्म होकर लॉस बन गया अभी भी आपको टैक्स देना पड़ेगा लेकिन वो तब जब ये सारा लॉस खत्म हो जाएगा मतलब तीन चार पांच साल बाद और अगर तब बिजनेस बंद हो गया तो गवर्नमेंट वुड नॉट गेट एनी उस प्रॉब्लम को सॉर्ट करने के लिए एएमटी बनाया एएमटी में क्या किया गया गवर्नमेंट ने कहा आपका नॉर्मल टैक्स जो बनता है एज पर इनकम टैक्स वो निकाल दो ये जो हम नॉर्मल टैक्स निकाल रहे हैं ये एज पर इनकम टैक्स प्रोविजन आप वो निकाल दीजिए और आपको निकालनी पड़ेगी एक एटीआई एटीआई निकालने का फॉर्मेट है हमारे पास उस एटीआई में आपको टेन डबल ए थर्टी फाइव एडी की डिडक्शन नहीं मिलेगी अगर ले ली गई डिडक्शन तो वापस एड बैक कर देंगे डिसअलाउड कर फॉर द पर्पस ऑफ ए एम टी तो टेक्निकली होगा क्या कि जो अकाउंट वाला प्रॉफिट है और जो इनकम टैक्स वाले प्रॉफिट में जो ह्यूज डिफरेंस था वो कम हो जाएगा काफी मतलब अकाउंट और इनकम टैक्स का प्रॉफिट काफी आस आ जाएगा तो हम उस ए का फिक्स रेट है 18.5 परसेंट वो टैक्स और जो आपका नॉर्मल टैक्स आ रहा है उसमें से जो हायर है वो क्लेम कर उससे गवर्नमेंट को क्या होगा एवरी ईयर कुछ ना कुछ टैक्स फ्लो मिलता रहेगा वेदर इनकम टैक्स में लाइबिलिटी जीरो या कम आ रही है बट ए से टैक्स मिलता रहेगा अब एस ने बोला ये गलत फिर फायदा क्या हुआ एग्जामेशन का डिडक्शन का अगर मुझे ए टैक्स ही देना है उसके लिए आया है ए क्रेडिट वॉट वी आर डिस्कसिंग इनकम टैक्स सेल्स डू नॉट वरी इफ यू आर पेइंग टैक्स लुक यू हैव टू पे टैक्स हंड्रेड रुपीज एज पर नॉर्मल प्रोविजन एंड एज पर एम टी यू नीड टू पे हंड्रेड एंड टेन सो वी विल टेक हंड्रेड एंड टेन बट वी विल गिव यू टेन रुपीज क्रेडिट सपोज द नॉर्मल टैक्स इज जीरो देन हायर इज हंड्रेड एंड टेन देन यूर क्रेडिट विल बी हंड्रेड एंड टेन दिस हंड्रेड एंड टेन वॉट एवर यू आर पेइंग ड्यू टू एम टी डू नॉट वरी वी विल गिव यू डिस्काउंट ऑफ दैट हंड्रेड एंड टेन रुपीज ओके ओके आंसर आ गए सो सेकंड वाले केस में ऑफकोर्स बिक्सली अंडरस्टूड एन बी पीपल आई गेट वट एवर आई वॉज ट्राइंग टू से इन ए एम टी सो इन सपोज इन सेकेंड ईयर दैट वॉज हंड्रेड एंड ए एम टी टैक्स इज वन ट्वेंटी सो यू हैव टू पे वन ट्वेंटी रुपीज नाउ ए एम टी क्रेड विल बी ट्वेंटी फॉर दिस ईयर सो वन मोर थिंग दैट विल बी क्यूमुलेटिव ए एम टी सो दैट वॉज टेन बट इज दिस ईयर दिस ट्वेंटी प्लस टेन ऑफ दिस सो टेक्निकली माई टोटल ए एम टी क्रेड विल बी थर्टी रुपीज क्लियर Now suppose in year three, my normal tax is one twenty five. That will happen when the deduction benefit, when the exemption benefit will over. From that year, definitely your normal tax liability will be higher than your AM. It will happen. And suppose this is hundred and fifteen. So the higher is now 
125. So my tax liability will be 125. Because now income tax part is higher than the AMT part. Now the provision says you can get the benefit of AMT credit. Like this year your AMT was 10. The other year is 20. The total is 30. This credit can be utilized. AMT credit benefit. AMT discount can be claimed only in that year in which your normal tax is higher than AMT tax. So this 10 rupees benefit we cannot claim in second year because in this year also your AMT tax is higher. But in the third year your normal tax is higher than AMT. So that year AMT credit can be utilized in which normal tax is higher than AMT. How much AMT we can utilize? How much credit? In this year we need to pay 125 rupees and we have the credit of 30 rupees but we cannot use the 30 rupees credit. No. How much credit we can utilize? The difference of AMT tax and normal tax of this year. So what is your normal tax this year and what is your AMT tax difference? That can be claimed out of the AMT credit. That is 10 rupees. So out of this 30 rupees, we can only utilize 10 rupees as AMT credit. So we need to pay cash tax of only 115 rupees. This 10 rupees will be used out of this cumulative credit 10. So liability was 125. 10 will be utilized out of the credit. And we need to pay in cash government 115 rupees tax. Now in this year there is no MT credit. But we have utilized 10 rupees. So my cumulative tax credit will be 20 rupees. This credit will be utilized as per P4 method. That means first this credit will be utilized. So the remaining will belongs to this value. Why FIFO? Because the maximum time to utilize this is 15 years. So whatever AMT credit you accrue in year one, like 10 rupees, you can utilize that credit into next 15 assessment year. If 15 years has been elapsed and there is no AMT credit utilized, that AMT credit will be elapsed. That will be gone forever. Suppose in year 4, 122 was my normal tax and 116 is my AMT tax. Now higher will be 122. So can you tell me how much need to pay? How much need to pay in cash to the government? We can claim the AMT credit in this year. Yes. How much we can claim? The difference of normal tax and AMT. That is 6 rupees. So I can borrow 6 from this. So I need to pay 116 cash to government. 6 will be used as a creditor. So after that my AMT credit will be 14. We have 20 rupees this value in second year. 2 years has been used. Now 14 rupees left for the next balance 13 years. We have to utilize for in next 13 years this 14 rupees credit. And so on. So you get it. Even if you are paying higher tax in this year. But government say do not worry. Whatever you are paying due to AMT. That will be your credit. That can be utilized in future. Just like a GST credit. Okay. So that's what I want to uh, tell you. Before starting this topic. In numerical. That what is the concept of AMT. Because if. We do not discuss the concept of AMT, the reason to introduce the AMT. Then you might be very confused that why we are studying this AMT provision, why these provisions are here and why if government is charging AMT, then what is the need of benefit of section 35 AD or section 10 double? So that must give you a clarity in your mind that why AMT we are studying and there is no harm to pay higher tax because we can get the credit of it. But yes, if for next 15 years you're not going to avail the benefit of that credit, then that credit will be lapsed. All these provisions are here. And the ATI concept, how to calculate ATI is also here. Okay, Ms. Kiran Shukla is asking, then sir, what about section 10 AA and 35 AD? That 10 AA and 35 AD will be your normal income tax liability provision part. So in that case, your normal income tax liability will be lower. AMT tax will be higher. 
so you need to pay tax as per amt and that's why you will get the credit so that credit is exactly the same benefit for the section 10 double and 35 that credit can be utilized in future so technically you are not paying anything extra like your normal income tax is 10 rupees your amt is 40 rupees so you need to pay the 40 rupees why it's 40 because 10 double a and 35 ad benefit is not an amt but if you pay 40 rupees then the 30 rupees whatever you have paid extra is your credit so you can get the benefit of that credit in the year in which your normal tax is more than amt tax so the benefit of 10 double a and 35 ad you will get but in future and in installment technically the income tax act 1961 contains profit linked and investment linked deduction in order to encourage investment in various industries why section 10 double is there because to give the benefit to the special economic zone in various industry and infrastructure facilities taxpayers who exercise the option to shift out of default tax regime under section 115 bac and are eligible to claim such deductions end up paying no income tax there's a very good provision that if you are applying section 115 bac then amt provisions are not applicable so if you are ready to pay tax as per section 15 bac then that tax will be your tax liability you need not to pay via amt but again here is a, a provision is there what we will discuss later Ravi. so because in normal case what was happening that the assessee was earning a lot of income but not paying anything tax due to the benefit of section 35 ad 10 double a etc it has to be kept in mind that our government needs regular consistent flux needs and because those person earning so much of income and if they are not going to pay anything as a tax then how country will run which is of one of its major source of revenue to fund various expenses for the welfare of the country so whatever project government is running for free housing free education free health roads infrastructure our security, etc. How they are paying? So government is paying that amount via tax. And if the majority of businessmen, those are availing section 35 ADs, not a small businessman. Those are availing section 10 double A's. This, those are not small businessmen. So if they are not going to pay anything on the huge profit what they are earning, so it will be really difficult for the government to run our country. So for that purpose, they start mad provision on companies because they think that companies are doing this but after some year government realized in i guess 2009 or 10 that this kind of provision should also be applicable on other than companies so amt provision has been introduced so the concept of amt has been reduced chapter uh, 12ba contains a special provision for levy of alternate minimum tax in case of person other than a company why other than a company? Because for company, there's only MAT provision there. Clear? The provisions of AMT would, however, not be applicable to an individual HUF, AOP, BOI, whether incorporated or not, or artificial judicial person if the adjusted total income of such person does not exceed 20 lakh. So if your adjusted total income, ATI, so for me, adjusted total income, if it is not exceeding 20 lakh, then we do not need to apply AMT provision. Then you need to pay tax as per normal provision. But if your ATI exceed 20 lakh rupees, then you have to apply AMT provision. Again, if individual HUF, AOP, BOI, AJP paying tax under default tax regime, that means under section 115 BAC, then they are not need to calculate any AMT tax as per section 115 JC. I have made a summary for all of you to make you understand easily how to calculate AMT tax, etc. So this is the summary. AMT will be applicable as follows. Find out regular income tax liability as per normal provision of income tax. Act. After giving section 10, AA, 35, AD, whatever it is. First of all, you have to calculate your normal income tax liability. Then find out ATI of the non-corporate assessment. Then you have to find out ATI of the non-corporate assessment. ATI have to calculate, has to calculate like this, total income as per income tax act, 
we need to take the income as per income tax act not as per accounting whatever plus minus we have done as per section 28 to section 43b we have to done that then if you have claimed these three deduction for calculating total income as per income tax act if you have claimed these kind of deduction and you should pay attention that we are talking about total income as per income tax act not net profit as per pgvp we have to calculate profit as per pgvp other head of income all deduction etc so we are talking about ti whatever total income you have calculated as per income tax act and if you have claimed these deduction these three one point number one two three deduction out of this total income then you have to add back this deduction section 80 qqb qqb i said qq banai 80 double j double a and 80 rrb if claimed if claimed in this value so if these deduction has been claimed these deduction need to add back if section 10 double a deduction has been claimed it needs to add back if section 35 ad deduction has been claimed it needs to add back so the depreciation on that 35 ad we have to reduce but the deduction need to be added back for example suppose we calculate this total income deduction section 35 ad was 200 lakh so we have uh, reduced this 200 lakh for calculating this total income. Suppose total income is now 60 lakh. After claiming this 200 lakh deduction. Now point number 3 says that you have to add back section 35 AD deductions. You cannot claim this reduction. So you add back 200 lakh but you can claim depreciation on this value. Because depreciation you should have allowed as per accounting also. So the debt, whatever on this 200 lakh, suppose at the rate of 10% we are claiming it, that is 20 will be reduced. So full deduction should be add back, but whatever the depreciation will be as per income tax act, that you need to reduce. So net 180 will be add back due to section 35 AD. Okay. So that will be my ATI. So if ATI exceed 20 lakh, then AMT apply. Otherwise, AMT not applicable. Clear? 18.5% is the fixed rate for every case. Surcharge as per normal provision and 4% says. So this is step number 3 will be my tax liability as per AMT. Step 1 was normal income tax liability. Step 3 is my AMT tax liability. Now step 4 says what will be the tax liability in total income? So step one or step three, whichever is higher, will be my tax liability and respective income will be my total income. Now point number two says excess paid can claim as AMT credit in 15 years as provisions of MAT. Credit can claim in the year in which normal tax more than AMT. You can claim the benefit of this uh, tax only in that year in which AMT is less than normal tax. How much credit we can claim? Normal tax minus AMT. If normal tax is 120, AMT is 118. Then 2 rupees can be claimed as credit. Tax credit allowed even if ATI does not exceed 20 lakh in the year of set off. A person who is paying tax under default tax regime under section 15 BAC would not be eligible to claim AMT credit. If in future year, in, in, in any year, if you are going to pay tax as per section 15 BAC, in that year, you cannot claim the benefit of AMT credit. Clear? These, this is the provision theoretically as per the act. I have made all the summary in these points. So you can read these provision exactly the same concept of calculating ATI, tax credit, when you can use that tax credit, how much tax credit you can utilize, etc. Et Next step number 13. So that will be discussed after the break. Let me see if there is any query. Then we will go for the break. Sir, amount is rupees 110, but credit is only 1. No, not 1. It will be 10 rupees. Who says it's rupees 1 credit? If the tax value, I don't think so, it's 1. Let me see. 
where I have written one. There's 10. I guess there is some confusion, Mr. Shivanan. Next is uh, Ruturaj. Sir, but in reality, I was supposed to pay zero tax for five years, but now I'm paying 100, 125, etc. and great credit of just 25. That means I am paying 200 when I was not supposed to pay anything. How is it justified? But that credit, whatever you are paying excess, suppose if you are paying zero rupees is your normal tax, clear? And you pay 100 rupees under AMT. So 100 rupees will be your credit. That 100 rupees you can utilize in those years in which your income tax liability is higher than your AMT. Full 100 rupees can be utilized as credit in next 15 years. So technically the thing as per mathematics is same. You are not going to pay extra tax. You are just going to do one thing. You are paying extra tax in this year. 100 rupees. But that 100 can be claimed as the AMT credit in next 15 years. So technically you are not going to pay anything. You paid 100 over here and you are getting the benefit of 100 which you will utilize as a discount in future. So technically, where you pay anything, 100 minus 100, it will be zero. Think about it. You will understand that there is no exactly tax paid. But yes, if in next 15 years, your normal tax liability does not tax it AMT, that will be a problem. If you are not able to utilize that credit in next 15 years, yes, in that case, your benefit of tax, your deduction benefit, is definitely not going to avail by you. Sir, one case study, one company initial year uh, earned huge income, but due section 10 AA and section 35 AD, MAT tax paid later one MNC company took these company and continuously losses incurred and the MAT time period elapsed eight year and charged to P. Look, if it happens that you are not able to take the credit of that, then the benefit of 10 AA literally went off. So you have to use technically what government is supposed to uh, do is this, that if you take to pay, if you take the benefit of paying minimum tax or not paying any tax, then due to AMT, we will give you the credit. So at least within 15 years, your tax liability will be equivalent to normal tax. So that is the concept. But if in 15 years that is not happening, your normal tax liability is not increasing, you are regularly in loss, then the benefit of that credit will be lost. That means that advantage of 10 AA or 35 AD will not be technically availed by you. Okay. Yes, AMT like piggy bank, you can say that first deposit, then withdraw every year. Amar Gupta, yes. And if till 15 years you are not able to withdraw it, then that piggy bank will be lost. Exactly like that. Well done. So, of course, you can ask for a break. Even I need a break. So, we will meet after the break. So, camera quality has been stopped. Mr. Manish, can we go for a break?
So welcome back everyone. I believe that you must have all your tea, coffee, etc. and ready to study forward. So for those who have confusion or who have complained to income tax department that they are actually not giving you the benefit of section 3580 or 10AA etc. Let me show you with the help of a simple example that might make you understand that government is not taking the benefit from you. But there is a different process to give you that benefit. Suppose there is a business of X, Y, Z. Fine. He's a proprietorship business. And uh, the projection of this business is that for first year, second year, third year, fourth year, there will be no tax as per income tax. Okay. In year 5, 6, 7, 8, as per income tax, there was tax of 100 rupees each year. Why there is no tax in starting 4 years? Suppose due to section 10 AA or 35 AD, etc. Clear? This is, this is the uh, situation if there was no AMT provision was there. Clear? Without AMT, this was the structure of paying tax of this business that starting four year there was no tax and after four year there will be a tax of 100 rupees each for every year. Now suppose AMT applicable and now what is happening actually that year one as per income tax provision tax was zero but as per AMT suppose tax is 100. In year two Again, 0, AMT tax 100. Year 3, 0, AMT tax. Year 4, 0, AMT tax. Year 5, 100, 0, 6, 100, 0, 7, 100, 0, 8, 100, 0. So now what will happen in first year, there will be a tax liability you need to pay is 100 rupees. And AMT credit will be your 100. Clear? In second year, you need to pay 100 rupees. So total you have paid 200 and your AMT credit will be 200. In third year, you need to pay 100 rupees higher. So total you have paid 300, your credit will be 300. In fourth year again, you will pay 100 rupees. Total you have paid is 400. Your credit will be 400. Clear? In fifth year, your liability will be 100 rupees. But this will be utilized out of your credit. So you need not to pay anything. Clear? Your credit will remain 300. In the second year again, 100 is your liability. 100 is your credit. Your tax will be 0. So remaining will be 200. In the third year again, 100 minus 100, your liability will be pay, to pay taxes 0. Your tax liability is 100, but you are not going to pay anything in cash. So your remaining is 100. And the fourth year will be the same thing. So now you can see in the both scenario, when there was no empty, the total tax liability of 8 year will be 400 rupees what you need to pay in cash. And even after AMT, you can see the total tax liability to pay is again 400 rupees. But these 400 have been paid in the initial four years. And these 400 has been paid in the later years. So there is nothing extra you are going to pay. If within 15 years you are able to set off the benefit of AMT credit, then you are not going to pay anything extra. What AMT does, AMT just charge tax in the initial year or average tax in regular years. Suppose if this business shut down in this fourth year, after this fourth year, then government will have the loss of 400 rupees tax. So to avoid that loss, income tax or government do what? They just charge this 400 rupees initial year or regular amount of tax some value. But it does not mean that you need to pay anything extra. No, because this credit you can utilize in future year. So definitely there can be some tax payment in the initial year, but the benefit of that tax payment will be utilized by you in the future year also. 
So that is the scenario I want to explain you. So you might understand that income tax is not fetching anything from you. They are not like this that you are not giving the benefit of section 10 AA or 35 AD. This does not the intention. But from the border point of view, department understood that we need to charge tax from regular intervals. Because if this business shut down, etc., then we will lo lose our a lot amount of tax, a huge amount of tax. Because these businesses are technically huge business. Those are availing benefit of section 10 AA and 35 AD. I guess it's clear. Okay. Let me take the queries. <clears throat> Sir, it means we have to consider AMT provision every year for every SSE. Yes, of course, yes. Fine. Best example, sir. Diamond clear. Okay, very good. What happens to AMT credit accumulated and business is shut down? So if AMT credit accumulated and business shut down, then you are in loss condition. So department say, why we bear loss? Because you shut down your business. So we need our tax initial years. So if you shut down, that was your loss, not our loss, not the loss of the revenue to the country that can be utilized for the benefit of the people who need the benefit, who need the revenue, who needs that help from the government. So it is your loss, not the government or country loss. So since purpose of AMT to get regular cash flow to government, but in this example, after four years, government will not get regular cash flows. After four or five years, that business generate more income. So I just given you the example to make you understand that that 400 rupees liability or benefit is availed by the SSE. But I just took the all years tax or all years income is same. But what will happen in initial year, every business in low profit mode. After four or five years, the profit grows. So technically it does not with the help of an example, you are just seeing that only 100 rupees will be your tax liability after four years. But in future, the income tax liability will be higher than that. Maybe 150, 160, 120, 200, 210. So in the benefit of 400 you will get, but the extra tax whatever will be there that is going to be paid by then SSE. So that was the concept because section 10 AA benefit will be over after 10 or 15 years. Section 35 AD benefit will be over after 5 or 6 or 10 years. After that amount has been uh, used as a business expenditure, then 35 AD huge amount will be uh, absorbed by the profit of that business. If a hotel is running, then initial year that loss will create due to section 35 AD. But after that, they will earn huge profit. So in initial year, we are not getting anything. So AMT concept was just that, that in initial year, we want some amount of tax from that source of business that if it shut down, that we are not in loss. That was the whole concept. Okay. Okay, story. Okay, yes, yeah, very, very interesting story for all of you. Uh, very good story. Dhyan se sunna. Very uh, personally, I also like this story. So, एक गांव था, एक village, उधर एक farmer था, एक किसान था, जिसको अपने cattle के लिए, अपने crops के लिए, अपने farming के लिए, अपने जो उसके animals थे, cow, buffalo, etc. उनकी देखभाल के लिए एक employee चाहिए था. तो एक एम्प्लॉय उसके पास काम मांगने के लिए आया और उसने उससे डिस्कशन किया कि मेरा ये वाला काम है और ये काम आपको करना है दोनों में एग्रीमेंट हुआ ठीक है इतनी सैलरी में हम ये काम करेंगे बट किसान ने कहा द फार्मर सेड टू दैट एम्प्लॉय दैट आप एक साल से पहले मेरा काम छोड़कर नहीं जाओ यू हैव टू वर्क फॉर एटलीस्ट वन ईयर और अगर आप छोड़ के गए तो जो भी जो भी सैलरी मैंने आपको दी है वो आपको मुझे वापस करनी पड़ी एम्प्लॉय ने कहा ठीक है एम्प्लॉय ने कहा सेम इज एप्लीकेबल विद यू कि आप मुझे एक साल से पहले हटाएंगे नहीं और अगर हटाया तो मेरी जो भी एक साल की सैलरी है वो और एक्स्ट्रा कुछ पेनल्टी भी आपको देनी पड़ेगी किसान ने कहा ठीक है तो किसान ने उस एम्प्लॉय को अपने पास रखा और वो उसका काम करने लगा कुछ दिनों बाद उस किसान से मिलने एक दूसरे विलेज से उसका एक दोस्त आया और उसने देखा कि जिस एम्प्लॉय को किसान ने रखा है तो उसने बताया अपने दोस्त के फार्मर को कि अरे ये तुमने किसको एम्प्लॉय रखा है ये एम्प्लॉय तो जब भी बारिश आती है जब भी तूफान आता है तो ये तो आराम से सो जाता है तो ये तो बहुत गड़बड़ हो जाएगी आपके काम के लिए तो किसान को लगा ये तो प्रॉब्लम है फिर एक और उसका फ्रेंड आया दूसरे गांव से उसने भी सेम कहा कि ये जो आपने एम्प्लॉय रखा है 
ये तो तूफान में भी सोता रहता है इसको कोई फिक्र नहीं होती ये तो प्रॉब्लम हो जाएगी तो किसान बहुत टेंशन में है उसने अपने इंप्लॉय को बुलाया उसने कहा सब लोग ये कह रहे हैं कि भाई तुम तो जब आंधी तूफान बारिश होती है तब सो जाते हो ध्यान नहीं रखते हो चीजों पर उसने कहा ठीक बात मैं तो बिल्कुल सो जाता हूँ जब भी आंधी तूफान बारिश होती है लेकिन आपने मुझसे पूछा नहीं और अब तो आप मुझे निकाल भी नहीं सकते बिकॉज मेरा तो टर्म है वन ईयर का किसान को लगा अभी तो बारिश आने में बहुत टाइम है तो मैं खुद ही मैनेज करता हूँ किसी तरह से सारी चीजों को इसके भरोसे तो नहीं रह सकते और इसको निकालने से नुकसान होगा बिकॉज बहुत सारी सैलरी देनी पड़ेगी तो किसान ने उस रात सोचा कि भगवान आज अगले आठ दस दिन तक बारिश ना आए तो मैं अगले आठ दस दिन में ये सारा काम खुद मैनेज कर लूंगा इस पर भरोसा नहीं है मेरे को क्योंकि तो सब लोग कह रहे हैं तो सो जाता है अब भगवान ने उसकी सुन ली जिस दिन उसने ये प्रेयर करी थी रात को ही बारिश आ गई तूफान आ गया बहुत तेज अब किसान रात को उठा घबराकर उसने कहा अरे भगवान ये तो आज बारिश आज ही करा दी आपने और वो जो है वो तो सो रहा होगा और मेरा तो सारा काम खराब हो जाएगा तो वो भागा भागा अपने इंप्लॉय के पास गया देखने के वो क्या कर रहा है तो उन्हें पता है क्या कर रहा था एम्प्लॉय सो रहा था आराम से उसने बहुत जोर से उसे आवाजें दी उठाने की कोशिश करी बट वो नहीं उठा तो भागा भागा किसान गया अपने जहां पर उसका प्रोडक्शन रखा था जहां उसकी फसल रखी हुई थी बीट राइस एटसेट्रा कि भाई मैं ही बचाता हूँ ये तो सो रहा है बहुत तेज बारिश हो रही थी तो किसान जब भाग कर वहां पहुंचा गोडाउन में तो उसने नोटिस करा कि वो जो भी सारा सामान था उसका प्रोडक्शन वो सारा प्रॉपरली पैक्ड था बारिश का कोई पानी नहीं आ रहा था प्रॉपरली सेफ जगह पर रखा हुआ था कवर्ड था प्रॉपरली तो किसान ने कहा ये तो प्रॉपरली सेफ है तो मैं अपने जानवरों को देखकर आता हूँ मेरे जो काउज हैं बफेलोज हैं वो तो बेचारे परेशान नहीं है गीले तो नहीं हो रहे तो भागा भागा अपने वहां गया चेक करने तो देखा सबके पास प्रॉपर खाना रखा हुआ है पानी रखा हुआ है वो सब भी कवर्ड है आराम से बैठे हुए हैं देन उसने कहा कि मेरी बहुत सारी जो लकड़ियां हैं मेरे जो वुड्स हैं वो गीले हो जाएंगे मुझे जरूरत पड़ती है मेरे जो इक्विपमेंट्स हैं वो खराब हो रहे होंगे तो भाग के तीसरे गोडाउन में गया अपने चेक करने तो वो भी सब कवर्ड थे सब सेफली रखे हुए थे किसान ने कहा ये तो कमाल हो गया नेक्स्ट डे जब बारिश बंद हुई सुबह तो वो अपने एम्प्लॉय का पूछा बोला तुम तो सब कहते थे सोते रहते हो तूफान में और तुमने तो सब काम कर दिया है तो कहते मैंने कब मना किया मैं तो सो जाता हूं लेकिन मैं उस तूफान के वेट नहीं करता हूं कि वो कब आएगा तब तैयारी करूं मैं अपनी प्रिपरेशन पहले करता हूं तो जिस दिन आपने मुझे रखा मैंने उसी दिन से सारी प्रिपरेशन करी और आपने उनमें से किसी से पूछा नहीं कि जब तूफान में सोता है तो क्या नुकसान होता है आपने पूछा नहीं किसी ने बताया नहीं तो आपने एक रॉन्ग ओपिनियन बनाया मेरे बारे में तो तूफान में सोने का मतलब ये नहीं है कि मैं गलत हूं बट मैं उसकी प्रिपरेशन पहले से करके रखता हूं प्रिपरेशन एंड प्लानिंग तो मैंने सब काम अपना कर दिया था पहले ही कितना भी तूफान आए मुझे क्या चिंता मैं तो इसलिए सो जाता हूं सो दैट इज एप्लीकेबल ऑन योर एग्जामिनेशन ऑल्सो देर आर सर्टन स्टूडेंट्स हु थिंक्स की विल स्टार्ट स्टडिंग बिफोर टू और थ्री मंथ बिफोर द एग्जामिनेशन विल स्टार्ट रिवाइजिंग After one month or two months or three months, not now. That's a very dangerous position. You have to prepare yourself, plan and prepare yourself before the exam. Your examination is not less than a tufan, not a not not. It's like a hurricane, typhoon. Everything is going to be happening in your examination. You will be nervous. So, but if you are prepared well, if you are plan and prepared well yourself before the examination, then you will not be nervous like that employee. You will be cool. You will study. No, I'm not saying you should sleep in examination. No, 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 no. That means you have prepared properly. If you have planned properly, then you will not be nervous in your examination. You don't not do not to sleep. You will sleep like six hour in a during examination. But there is no need to study for twenty four hours. That will actually going to uh, not going to help you because your brain will be really tired if you not sleep during examination. There is a six or seven hours sleep is necessary. so why you need to take both the risks of not sleeping at that time examination when you can study right now so i have seen that some students said that uh, if examination ek mahine baad aur hota na to main sab pad leta so fir to pakka pass ho jata but ye nahi hota ek mahine baad bhi exam hoga na the student will say the same thing ki ek mahine baad aur hota na tab main sab kuch kar leta to abhi kar lo na abhi to bacha hai bahut sara time give you time apni padhai ka time badhao अपने रिविजन को कंप्लीट करो प्रिपेयर एंड प्लान योर सेल्फ ये प्रिपरेशन बट मुझे बहुत पसंद है आई वुड नॉट से दैट बट लेट मी टेल यू व्हेन आई वाज गिविंग माय इंटरमीडिएट एग्जामिनेशन सो आई वाज सो प्रिपेयर्ड दैट आफ्टर गिविंग एवरी एग्जामिनेशन एवरी एग्जामिनेशन आई केम आउट ऑफ माय एग्जामिनेशन हॉल 
एंड देर वर माई फ्रेंड्स एंड आई ऑलवेज टेल देम मेरा ये वाला पेपर तो पास हो गया अगले वाले को देखू and they say why are you saying this so i said i have revised three or four times every paper i have done all the last four or five years question paper solved then why need to nervous there are student who are so nervous during examination and i was thinking why you are nervous if you are prepared well you are nervous okay but if you are you are not going to fear the examination if you are prepared well so prepare yourself from today let me tell you a very small thing it's a uh, practically happened I actually i completed my 12th in 1997 when i was 16 year old fine i was born in 1981 in 1997 i uh, completed my 12th examination and for next 3 years i did my graduation bcom because i want to enjoy that graduation life that college life so it was very fascinating for me so i did not go for foundation etc i joined my graduation college there was a very famous college in my uh, city so i need to enjoy that life and uh, after that 3 years i joined ca course so those 3 years in my graduation life because why i want to live that life because in ca at that time there was not gmcs concept not that induction trainings that uh, uh, rrc picnics that uh, international seminar national seminar that sports culture activities were not there like no sikasa etc so i was very fascinating by that college life so i joined that college life in technically uh, when i was like 19 years in 2000 in years in the year 2000 i have completed my graduation then i joined ca course in 2004 i became ca so like 20 years have been passed in 2024 i will complete my 20 years so i was like 23 year old when i completed my ca after graduation so when i completed my graduation there was a my very famous mba college in my city and they called me for guest lecture on income tax because they need some guest faculty so they asked me to come and deliver five or six lecture on some income tax topic i guess that was residential status etc before that i start my coaching also but it was a very small scale level i was teaching like five students in a class so they asked me and there was like 60 70 student in the class they told me and you have to come and teach them like income tax provision in 2004 so i was very scared that i already was only teaching like three or four students in my coaching and uh, now i need to deliver a lecture on 70 80 students of my mba colleges and that was a very renowned mba college of my city so i said okay fine i will come i cannot leave that opportunity and what uh, i did actually suppose the lecture is on tomorrow so today one day before that lecture i went to the college i asked the permission from the director that i need to visit the college i need to visit the classroom before the day of my lecture he said okay you can come so i went to the college after the students have gone like after the uh, college time is over i went i find that class because i need to know the way i don't not want that at the time when i am entering the college the next day for lecture i need to find the classroom i need to ask someone so i prepare myself i went to the college i find the where is the classroom i went to the classroom i saw that there is a white board for utilization so i need to buy marker and i saw where is the desk where the students are sitting where i need to come where is the stage is going to there so i need to prepare myself to overcome that nervousness so the day when the lecture was there i just went to the college and you need not to ask anyone where is my classroom i went to the classroom i know where is the stage where i need to stand where is the marker where is the duster i knew everything and the student was thinking that oh my god how he is know everything that uh, he is the first time he is taking my classes in my colleges my college then how is so prepared because just a proper planning and preparation that will reduce your nervousness and once you are confident when you are not nervous you perform better in every situation so that's the story the more the story that you have to prepare for the storm before before that hurricane that typhoon that flood is coming you have to prepare yourself so please please understand this thing preparation and planning is necessary before you execute the work many students just start executing the work before the preparation and planning they start study you have to prepare first that how we need to cover the study etc so i started my classes with five students and i almost teach 200 students in my class it was like that so there was students standing out of the class for waiting for my tuitions but from 2020 2020 after covid i switch on to this portal okay so long story today let's move on to the provision part okay
सर ये स्टोरी आपने रिपीट सुनाई है नो बेटा नो इट्स नॉट अ रिपीट आई हैव टोल्ड यू ऑल ओके सो सेक्शन वन फाइव बी एस सी वी वर डिस्कसिंग एंड नाउ स्टेप नंबर थर्टीन वी डिस्कस द एम टी कंसेप्ट नाउ स्टेप नंबर थर्टीन इज सेंग दैट वेन यू कैन ऑप्ट सेक्शन वन वन फाइव बी एस सी और ऑप्शनल टैक्स रिटर्न सो इफ यू आर इफ यू डू नॉट हैव एनी बिजनेस और प्रोफेशनल इनकम If you do not have any business or profession income, then you can switch between these two scheme, how many time or as many time you want. Like for this previous year, you can go for one five B A C. In the next year, you can go for other than one five B A C. Then in the for again next year, you can also opt a, opt a, in the one five B A C etc. So that is a optional scheme. In every year, if you are not carrying any business or profession, so the provision says in case of individuals. not having income from business or profession the total income and the tax liability may be computed every year both in accordance with default tax regime and regular tax provision you can calculate your tax liability as both as per both provision and the option having the lower tax liability you can opt it fine in order to determine which is more beneficial and accordingly decide whether or not to shift out of that scheme or not in fact such individual can choose whether or not to exercise the option of shifting out in each previous year he may choose to pay tax in the default tax regime under section 15 bac in one year and exercise the option to shift out of the default tax regime in the another year so if you do not have any business income then there is no restriction to enter into the scheme or opt out in the scheme but if you have business income then things will change in case of individual having income from business or profession the total income and tax liability may be computed both in accordance with default tax regime under section 15 bc and regular provision of the act and you can choose the most beneficial scheme to the as applicable to you but such individual has an option to shift opt out of the default tax regime under this section and the option has to be exercised on or before the due date specified in section 1391 for furnishing the return of income so you have to opt this option if you want to opt out of the scheme then you have to choose this option on or before the due date under section 1391 that was 31st of july or 31st of october or 30th of november for such previous year and one such option is exercise it would apply to subsequent assessment year so if you opt out of that option 15 bac if you choose to opt out of that section 15 bac then that normal scheme provision that 15 bac opt out provision need to be applied in every year but such person will get the advantage to again come into the section 15 bac only once such person who has exercised the above option of shifting out of the default tax regime for any previous year shall be able to withdraw such option only once and pay tax under the default tax regime section 15 bac for a previous year other than the year in which it was exercised thereafter such person shall never be eligible to exercise option under this section except where such person ceases to have any business income in which case option under above would be available let me explain you what they are trying to say to dekhiye hai kya if you do not have any business income no business or profession income so if you do not have any business or profession income then you can choose that you need to apply section 15 bac or optional scheme every year you are free to choose no restriction but if you are having income of business or profession then it says you can calculate tax as per section 115 bac or optional scheme 
which ever is lower suppose you opt out of the scheme you opt out from default tax regime and you fall in this chapter you need to you are going to pay tax as per normal scheme then you have to before due date of filing of return you have to intimate to the department that i am opting out of the default tax regime then if you opt out of the default tax regime then for subsequent year also you need to pay tax as per optional tax regime but after suppose 2 or 3 or 4 5 years you now want to again want to pay tax as per default tax regime so only once you are allowed to again come into this default tax regime you can leave that optional tax regime and only once you are allowed to continue to pay tax as per section 115 bac once you entered or opted that section 115 bac then now you cannot change then for subsequent year you have to pay tax under section 115 bac you cannot come or you cannot opt out section 115 bac now until you have business income then only one exception that suppose in future now you do not have any business income then again you can do this game you can come out of the scheme you can again opt out of the scheme you can come out of the scheme you can go in optional scheme so till when your business or profession income is there now you cannot change this option so if you are running a business or profession and if you opt out from section 115 bac then you have to continue with that scheme only once you can again go into section 115 bac but now if you come into the section 115 bac then this option cannot be changed you have to continue in that until otherwise your business income or your business or profession is no more so if there is no business profession then again you will fall in normal provision in which you can opt out or opt in in section 115 bac clear so how to intimate does we need to give report to department there is a portal on income tax portal you have to file a form in which you need to intimate the department before the due date of filing of return that for this year i want to uh, enter into the scheme or opt out of the scheme so there is a portal in there is a form you have to fill it and need to submit to the income tax department so for those who are from hindi let me explain you ki 115 bac aur jo optional scheme hai hamari that means uh, उट ऑफ डिफॉल्ट टैक्स रिज्यूम तो अगर आपका बिजनेस या प्रोफेशन नहीं है तो आप इन दोनों स्कीम में से जो भी स्कीम चाहे ऑप्ट कर सकते हैं एवरी ईयर आपको चेंज करने का राइट है बट अगर आपकी बिजनेस या प्रोफेशन की इनकम है और आप वन वन फाइव बी एस सी से ऑप्ट आउट होकर अदर देन डिफॉल्ट टैक्स रिज्यूम में जाते हैं तो फिर आपको ड्यू डेट ऑफ फाइलिंग ऑफ रिटर्न से पहले इनकम टैक्स डिपार्टमेंट को इन्फॉर्म करना पड़ेगा पोर्टल पर जाके एक फॉर्म भरना पड़ेगा और ऐसा होने के बाद फिर आपको हर साल इसी के अकॉर्डिंग टैक्स जमा करना है ऑप्ट आउट स्कीम के थ्रू एक बार लाइफ टाइम में आपको ऑप्शन मिलेगा कि आप वापस चाहे तो उनका बीएससी में चले जाएं लेकिन एक बार चले गए तो अब कभी चेंज नहीं कर आप नॉर्मल स्कीम में नहीं आएंगे जब तक कि आपका बिजनेस और प्रोफेशन की इनकम बंद ना हो जाए जिस साल बिजनेस प्रोफेशन की इनकम खत्म हो जाएगी देर इज नो बिजनेस प्रोफेशन इनकम फ्रॉम दैट ईयर आप अगेन दोबारा से उन पाए बीएससी या ऑप्शनल में प्लस माइनस अपना कर सकते हैं एवरी ईयर That was the provision. Now credit for advance tax TDS and TCS. Yeah, आप पढ़ी चुके हैं. That advance tax you have paid, you can claim the credit of out of your tax amount, whatever tax will be there. You can deduct your advance tax TDS and TCS. Fine. Tax payable or refundable after deducting TDS, TCS, credit, etc. Either there will be refund of tax or there will be tax payable of tax. So as we said, that total income should be rounded off. To the multiple of ten rupees, same is applicable in case of tax amount also. Whatever your tax payable or refundable, that will also be rounded off to the nearest of multiple of ten rupees. Now the last topic of this is chapter is tax planning or tax saving tips. That is for salary income. So this is a new topic which has been inserted from this year only, 
and for the understanding of this topic it is very important that you should know the basic provision of salary head under salary head we have discussed that there are multiple allowances multiple perquisite and basic salary gratuity pension provident fund etc etc now this topic does not have anything new it just asking you that suppose it's saying like this this suppose mr ram is going to join a company company say we will pay you 10 lakh rupees package there are some companies those say we will pay you 10 lakh rupees directly as a basic salary no allowances nothing this is basic salary option 1 that mr ram will get basic salary 10 lakh rupees in aggregate like 1 lakh rupees or 80000 rupees per month sort of like that so 10 lakh rupees will be paid divided by 12 per month whatever that is so if we see that if at the time of calculation of income tax if mr ram needs to calculate his tax liability then that will be like basic salary 10 lakh rupees no allowance no perquisite everything has been included in basic salary so he can only claim stand deduction of 50000 rupees under both regime so his taxable salary will be 9 lakh 50000 on which he might need to pay tax and it will be if we are in normal risk scheme or default risk scheme there will be a certain tax amount that will be calculated on 9.50 lakh rupees if there is certain deduction etc we can reduce but under salary only 50000 can be claimed as a deduction now suppose because mr ram is doing job he reside in suppose lucknow and went to job in a company in delhi so he need to pay rent also suppose the rent is 20000 rupees per month so company paid is 10 lakh rupees out of which 20000 per month that means almost 2 lakh 40000 rupees he needs to pay to the landlord so technically he is not getting 10 lakh rupees as saving out of this 10 lakh 2 lakh 40000 will be his outflow for paying rent and company is not giving any hra or rent free house so this 2 lakh 40000 will be his 100% outflow 240 will be gone then for convenience purpose for the commutation from office to his flat and vice versa to commute that his expenditure is 10000 rupees per month via cab or etc so that means he is paying 1 lakh 20000 cash outflow from this value also then for food purpose food expenses lunch dinner etc suppose that is 10000 per month again so these kind of expenditure he has to met out out of this 10 lakh rupees package and the problem is that this full 10 lakh is going to be taxable even when a lot of amount as cash outflow will be reduced from this value almost 3 or 5 lakh rupees will be reduced so technically he will get cash inflow of only 5 lakh rupees or 4 lakh 50000 rupees but need to pay tax on full value of 10 lakh which will be a huge amount of tax so we can structure his salary like this also that we can fix the salary of that much amount suppose his cash outflow is 2 like 4 lakh 80000 rupees in a year on food on accommodation and on con convenience so 480 is as cash outflow so we can do it like this also that out of this 10 lakh he can ask that my basic salary suppose will be 5 lakh 20000 other thing like rent convenience and food can be provided as a house rent allowance or rent free house facility car can be provided as a transport allowance or car facility like 2 lakh 1 lakh 20000 as a car facility or convenience or transport allowance convenience allowance or house rent allowance or rent free house that can be 2 lakh 40000 can be house rent allowance or i can have a rent free house facility for that or for food expenditure i can have like 50 rupees coupon that canteen benefit or 
free meals, etc. So that salary can be divided like one lakh twenty thousand for this purpose. So technically, he will receive ten lakh again, but that will be bifurcated into in this value. So we can claim the exemption of house rent allowance out of this. Suppose out of two lakh forty thousand, the house rent allowance comes to one lakh eighty thousand. So that is exempted. So only taxable value is sixty thousand in case of this two forty. If he would not get two forty as a house rent allowance and get a ten lakh rupees as a basic salary only, even then two forty is going to be his outflow. In this case also two forty is outflow, but tax liability will be not on two forty. This will be five twenty plus sixty. So that means five eighty. If he is getting conveyance allowance, and suppose the official expenditure on conveyance is one lakh rupees, so taxable value will be only twenty thousand. And if free food he is availing one lakh twenty thousand, and fifty rupees per day is the exemption for three hundred days, almost fifteen thousand. Suppose one lakh is taxable out of this value. So technically, now we need to pay tax only seven lakh with equal amount of cash outflow. Even in the first package, we are paying almost four lakh eighty thousand my cash outflow, but we need to pay tax on ten lakh rupees in that scenario. In the second case also, the cash outflow will remain the same two lakh forty thousand as HRA. One twenty will be his conveyance, and almost one twenty for his food. But because now we bifurcate that. Expenditure into allowances, etc. So now even his salary package is ten lakh. His outflow is the same, but the tax liability is now not on ten lakh, but it will be only on seven lakh. So what I am trying to make you understand that for the purpose of this concept, we need to know the provision regarding of salary income, and it needs to plan your salary structure in a way in which you can claim those allowances those are exempted like dearness allowance we always recommend to have dearness allowance as per terms of employment or as per retirement benefit part 1 because if you get the dearness allowance which is as per retirement terms or as per terms of employment so for the purpose of calculation of hra that will include in calculation of salary so your exemption will increase for the purpose of calculation of provident fund for the purpose of calculation of gratuity for the purpose of calculation of leave in cashment for the purpose of calculation of almost all provision only dearness allowance is considered so your exemption will increase if dearness allowance as per terms of employment so those exemption like insurance policy if life insurance policy is paid by employer it will be a perquisite and it will be taxable in your hand as an obligation of employee met by employer but if the medical or health insurance policy is paid by employer that is an exempted perquisite telephone facility is exempted perquisite so please plan your structure like this so that only those allowances and perquisite we can claim by which we can claim the maximum benefit under income tax these are the provisions exactly explaining those things so there is no specific structure has been decided it depends upon person to person salary etc the definition of salary is very wide and includes not only monetary salary but also benefit and perquisite in kind so this provisions is just like an essay it cannot be fixed that if this question is asked in examination how to structure your salary then it depends upon your creativity on your opinion that what kind of perquisite allowances we should include so that he can get the maximum benefit like for the purpose of medical perquisite if you are taking medical treatment in a hospital which is maintained by employer that is exempted if it is a government owned that is exempted but if it is a private that is going to be full taxable so you have to technically aware of all the provisions of salary head when the salary structure has been decided or if someone comes to you and ask if fine this is my 10 lakh rupees package should i take the basic salary of 10 lakh rupees full or i should bifurcate that salary into allowances and perquisite and which allowances and perquisite so first of all i will ask that person tell me what kind of expenditure and how much of expenditure you are going to incurred 
for performing those duty that how much rent you are supposed to pay for a flat or a pg how much your conveyance expenditure will be and how you will commute how much will be your food cost how much your telephone expenditure how much your health insurance etc so once he will tell me that this will be my practically or actual expenditure in respect of performing my duties then i can plan for that person how much amount or which kind of perquisite he should claim suppose a second client comes to me and he say my solicitor is this but i have my own house in that city so my that answer to the my first client and the second client will be different so there is no specific answer of this question because it will depend upon the other person requirement other person outflows other person company's provision regarding the allowances and perquisite etc so there is a general answer has been given in these provisions regarding the structure so the common provisions is that you can claim miscellaneous deduction under both the regime 50000 however under the optional tax regime as per normal provision of the act the deductions available under section 16 in respect of salary income are the standard deduction up to 50000 we also have deduction for entertainment allowance we have the deduction for professional tax also these three deduction is under if you opting out of the default tax regime but if you are in section 15 bac you can only have standard deduction of 50000 the following are some of the aspects which could be considered so these aspects are exactly everything you have gone through in the salary chapter nothing new an employer may plan the salary structure of employee keeping in with a deduction general answer exemption available under the act if salary is paid as a consolidated amount without any breakup the deduction will be only 50000 rupees therefore the employer may structure the salary by including various allowances and perquisite in addition to the basic salary so as to enable the employee to optimize his tax liability for example the employer may include allowances as part of salary structure of the employee for which exemption can be claimed by the employee like general education allowance hostel allowance etc employee welfare scheme like provident fund rpf spf etc those income repayment of from those funds are exempted so it's better that the you should not invest in urpf you should invest in rpf your employer should invest in rpf and if you are leaving the job before completion of 5 years in that case rpf payment is taxable so you should transfer that amount to the other employer in respective of withdrawing that amount so that will save your tax liability again so these are the provision if you will read them then you will connect them to the salary topic automatically and you will understand okay fine that's why they are saying that you have received that much amount like for gratuity payment up to 20 lakh rupees is exempted gratuity so you have planned that your gratuity amount if it exceeding 20 lakh rupees then there is no exemption more than 20 lakh rupees so if it is under 20 lakh then it's possible that your whole amount of gratuity can be exempted so this is general provision that has been written over here like for provident fund it should not exceed 7 lakh 50000 or 2 lakh 50000 or 5 lakh rupees as we have studied in chapter unit number 1 of chapter number 3 also insurance policy if it's a life insurance policy that is going to be a perquisite if it's a health insurance policy medical insurance policy that is going to be exempted so if your employer ask you whether you want me to pay your life insurance policy premium or your health insurance premium policy premium what you will say you will say please pay my health insurance premium policy that will exempt it under the head salary dns allowance of course if employer say would dns allowance you want what kind of dns allowance you want as a part of your retirement as per terms of employment or not so always say i want dns allowance as per terms of employment that will increase my exemption in everywhere where we include da as per terms leave travel facility what kind of leave travel facility you want so you can tell department the employer that that kind of leave travel which can be exempted under my provisions of section 105 rent free accommodation again you have to decide which kind of rent free accommodation you want uncommuted pension or commuted pension so uncommuted is always taxable so if the option is there ask for commuted pension that can be exempted for government employee full exempted other than government one third or one by two can also be exempted provident fund there is no new provision 
those perquisite, those allowances, those uh, compensation which can give you the maximum tax advantage. You have considered that for structuring your salary value. So that was the topic from this uh, illustration one. The question will start. Illustration one is regarding salary provision. Illustration two again for salary provision. And then test your knowledge question. So do not worry. We will discuss each and every illustration, both illustration and all the test your knowledge question in our next class, which will be on 30th of January. 30th of January. Okay. Before that, let me give you a last thing that how we are going to calculate the tax. So you will understand the basic concept of tax calculation, what we are going to discuss on 30th of January. So technically you see that there is 115 BAC to calculate tax. We have to find the tax liability, then the normal provision, then the AMT also comes into the picture. So when which provision is going to apply, how we need to find out our lowest tax liability, what is the exact procedure. So kindly see this. So there will be two cases. One is 115 BAC not applicable. So if we are not opting for 15 BAC, that means we are going to pay tax as per normal scheme. We are opting out of 115 BAC. So if this is the case, then we have to calculate normal tax as per income tax provision and AMT tax on ATI, the rate of 18.5%. Okay. So whichever higher is my income tax liability, the credit system we have discussed. But what will happen when section 115 BAC is there? So if 115 BAC is applicable upon us, then you have to calculate tax as following. Tax as per 115 BAC provision or normal tax as per income tax provision means like this whatever it is or AMT tax. Now the provision says whichever is higher. Now this higher has to compare with AMT tax sorry as per as to compare to 115 BAC and now whichever is lower is your tax liability. So if 115 BAC is not applicable on that assessee or he does not want to applicable it, then the tax will be out of these higher will be your liability. But if the 115 ABC is applicable on that person, then you have to calculate tax as per 115 BAC ones and normal tax or AMT whichever is higher as per normal provision and that higher value need to be compared with 115 BAC. Lower will be your tax liability. So you need to calculate tax thrice, one, two, three. So AMT tax is not applicable if 115 BAC tax is calculated. That means if you are applying 115 BAC, then that tax will be the final tax. You need not to compare with AMT tax. But as per normal tax, whenever you find a tax, you have to apply AMT tax if the AMT provision is applicable. That means if ATI exceeding 20 lakhs in both cases, of course. If ATI does not exceed 20 lakh, then of course tax as per 15 BAC or normal tax, whichever is lower. So when we will start solving the question of test your knowledge, etc., you will find the provision in which we have to find section 15 BAC tax, normal tax, and AMT tax also. We will only compare these two taxes, and higher will be compared with 15 BAC tax, and then lower will be your tax liability. So this diagram is very important. 
kindly uh, write it down the diagram so it will be really helpful to make you understand why we are calculating all three taxes in a single question so that is income tax okay let me take the queries then we will see okay mr ruturaj is asking uh it is easy if i have excised that one option of coming back in section 15 bsc and now i want to get out of it then i'll transfer the business to my sister and she will after one year re transfer it to me and i will again opt out of 15 b is it that simple to transfer a business you have to follow the whole process of gst provision etc to transfer your business your gst number will be changed how will your client approach you your itr pen number will be connected to your gst number so mr ruturaj it's not that simple just to save some amount of tax you will not going to take this much of risk that your business name will be changed its identity will be changed its pen number will be changed its gst number will be changed are you going to do all this thing just to 115 bsc provision it's better to hire a good chartered accountant he will save your tax fine next is Uh, Muhammad Salim, well, self-employed be considered a in PGP income? Yes, all self-employed means a business person or a profession person. And Mol, sir, Asasi will bifurcate himself, or he ask his employer to give salary by this way. That is in allowance form. Mm -hmm. Look in practical life, na, uh, employer has a specific structure. They want ask their employee that tell me what kind of package do you want. They have a specific structure, and they apply that to the. every employee of that particular category right but for the purpose of examination in examination uh, the question can asked that the package is 10 lakh rupees his outflow is this and this and this so kindly comment which is beneficial to him whether to take a perquisite whether to take an allowance the illustration 1 and 2 we just completed our provisions part the illustration 1 and 2 that is exactly the kind of question can be asked in examination but in practical life your employer do not ask what kind of perquisite what kind of allowances you want they themselves start a strategy or policy according to which they allow the house rent allowance amount fixed the conveyance facility etc you cannot generally uh, discuss these things with them okay aman gupta aaj ke liye kaafi hai yes sir give me a homework of solving a few question from study material so that in next lecture it will be more easy to understand okay fine एक बहुत ही इंपॉर्टेंट चीज मैं आप लोगों को बताता हूं जो मैं प्रैक्टिकली करता था इफ यू वांट टू अंडरस्टैंड एनी प्रोविजन एट द टाइम ऑफ लेक्चर बाय एनी टीचर एनी फैकल्टी इज अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग वेरी इजी वे टू अंडरस्टैंड थिंग्स वेरी इजीली बिफोर दैट चैप्टर इज गोइंग टू बी टीच बाय द फैकल्टी यू हैव टू गो थ्रू विद दैट चैप्टर इन एडवांस लाइक वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस दीज question of test your knowledge and illustration 1 and 2 on 30th of january let me give you a homework if you want a homework or if you want to my advice just try these question by yourself jitna bhi samajh aaye jaisa bhi matlab might be you will feeling ke, okay fine out of these 10 points i am not going to understand these 6 or 7 it does not matter just read those question try to solve it whatever problem is there just try to find the solution from the solution part or from the provision part just try this once for me okay i always do this thing and wherever i go for the tuition purpose and i know the teacher is going to read this chapter tomorrow and what i do i always read that chapter today before he start teaching so the next day when he start teaching that chapter i am very much very much actually you can say easy to understand what he is trying to teach me for better understanding it's really easy for me to understand that lecture very easily So this is an advice from my side. Always try to do this. Whenever any faculty is trying to teach you any chapter, just try to one day before go through that chapter. Might be you are just going to understand only twenty five percent of that chapter, but that will really going to help you when the faculty is going to start teaching you that chapter. So if you want to try that, try like that. The test your knowledge ten questions and illustration one and two. Just go through that. Jitna bhi samajh, jitne bhi points aapko samajh hai, just go through that. and on 30th of january when i will teach or solve those question with you you will feel that these question are so easy that's a promise from my side just try this thing this is a very nice trick 
to understand any chapter better than anyone else those are reading first time just read just read it just read it completely fine so just try that if you want homework from my side so that's a homework from my side just try that i don't want you to solve them completely just read them try to solve as many point as you can understand anyone anything else i will solve with you but just try it this thing this is really good okay but section 10 double is not available in 15 bsc so why need to calculate amt here we are not calculating amt under section 115 bsc we are calculating amt to compare that tax to the normal income tax provision because higher will be come out of normal tax and amt tax then whatever higher come out of those tax need to compare with the 115 bsc tax then lower will be your tax liability so there is no uh, 15 bsc is not asking for amt calculation it's for normal tax and amt tax higher we need to take that to find out the most beneficial tax structure for our assessee next is sir assessee will bifurcate himself or he'll ask employee okay next is mr harish chandra if individual not having a business income is amt is applicable yes if his ati if his adjusted total income is exceeding 20 lakh rupees then it is applicable whether do you have a pgbp income or not but technically what will happen if you do not have a pgbp income that means you do not have section 10 double you do not have section 3580 so your ati and your income tax income will almost come equivalent tax will be different because in ati it will be 18.5% under income tax it, the tax will be different so ati and ti will be almost same in that case but yes it is applicable if you do not have any business income exactly even in that case amt provision is applicable next is in 15 bsc manohar asking amt provision not applicable yes under section 15 bsc whatever tax will calculate as per section 15 bsc that will be your tax you need not to compare it with amt but for the final tax liability the 15 bsc tax and the tax as per normal provision or amt tax whichever is higher they both need to compare and then lower will be your tax liability okay aman saying is liye bus pehle schedule yes the providing schedule that means you have to go through that chapter yourself once before the faculty start teaching you it will really going to help you understand the all the provisions so easily i promise you just try this thing and you will feel that this chapter is so easy just try to follow this thing okay difference between amt and marginally what you are asking you are asking me a difference between a knife and the missile how can i compare the amt and the marginally they both are different topic mr mohammed salman we cannot compare that thing so we cannot compare a batsman or a hockey player we cannot compare a cricketer batsman or a football player they do have different kind of scenes so there is no differences of amt and marginally they both are different concept so i have completed all the topics so on 30th of january please do one thing try uh, all your test and knowledge question etc that will really going to help in the lecture we will see you each other on 30th of january till that good day and please study hard we will see again each other so manish can we finish the lecture